Good evening, good evening, good evening to all of my loyal opposition members. It is such a pleasure to be with you again tonight. I'm just checking to see how we're doing. I want to make sure you're picking me up. Okay, good evening to all of you. Uh, Jel Biz, Owen Hines, trust you all are getting me good and clear. If you are, I just want to confirm that. You're receiving me loud and clear so that when Mr. Franklin comes on and when uh, uh, Kimar comes on and Marcia comes on, we won't be dealing with uh, challenges of song. Uh, so <clears throat> just want to be sure, Alvin Simpson, good evening to you as well. Welcome again, springtime. Nigel Carrington, and great to have you all on again with us tonight. My goodness, it just seems that we were here last night. <laughs> I tell you, born again, 48, thank you. So just waiting for you to confirm you're hearing me good and loud and clear. All right, so just give me a thumbs up and, and uh, you know, a confirmation, loud and clear. Thank you, Victorious. What about you, Diana? Hi, husbands. Are you hearing me good? Yusuf Greenwich, <clears throat> just check in. Um, springtime. Uh, <laughs> yes, Okay. Okay, springtime, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, but a real joy to have you all joining with us again. Loud and clear, Yusuf. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay, so I can settle down, make sure that the technology is working okay, and getting ready for a great show tonight. We're going to be touching on a lot of things. Uh, we, we hopefully will get into some of the things we wanted to touch on last night. Uh, but we're going to be, again... We're going to be visiting the aspect of the cyber, uh, cyber crime bill, the $50 million loan uh, with the Afri F Exim Bank uh, uh, regarding Kensington Oval. We'll be taking a look at the World Bank that I touched on last night in terms of the uh, economic performance of Barbados, the amount of the purchase of electric buses, Chinese workers and their pay and, and taxes, the matters of windows to the sea. Of course, uh, I heard, uh, I, it is alleged that there is another uh, sar uh, sargasso uh, seaweed uh, system at River Bay Rusting. It is alleged. Now, I haven't seen pictures. I haven't been able to confirm it. I don't know for sure. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that when uh, Kimar comes on, he may be able to shed some light on that. And of course, uh, yesterday we had, I believe, the first time the leader of the opposition spoke back in his constituency in Christchurch South. And uh, from what I observed, it was a very well attended meeting and he was very well received and he spoke with clarity and the no holds barred from what I saw and what I understood. And certainly we are urging the, the uh, party and I will say this from my end, urging the party to get behind Mr. Thorne. Now, listen, I, I, I have a long, a long association with the Barbados Labour Party. My, as I mentioned, my mother was heavily involved with the Labour Party in the days of Tom Adams and, and uh, Brees and John and Vic Johnson. Uh, my brother as well uh, ran in the St. John constituency against Earl Barrow when no one wanted to run against Earl Barrow and he inevitably he became a senator uh, for the government. My sister has been actively engaged. Uh, she was at one time the vice consul of Barbados to Toronto. And, uh, you know, so, and, and we've had a very long association with the Labour Party, but the Labour Party is not what it was. And uh, I, I'm not the only person who has arrived at that conclusion. Mr. Glyne Murray, Mr. An Mr. Anthony Woods, and several of the other stalwarts. And, and if they're honest, you know, um, <laughs> I, I'll tell you, you know, if they're honest, what Mr. Arthur said in that interview in the Parliament building seems to be resonating now more than ever before. And so as we address the issues, you know, we are on this show. We are nonpartisan. We are not getting. We are not getting behind the BLP. We are not getting behind the DLP. What we are getting behind are the issues that Barbadian people have to deal with. We are getting behind what is in the best interest of um of the people of the people of Barbados. And 
Yes, Henderson, I'm not doing too badly. I'm a little tired because I've been so busy during the whole process of the day, but I, I'm excited to be here with all of you this evening. 372 already and climbing, as you know, I'm just waiting for that magic 500 and some that I can go in and pull out that national anthem and play it for us so that we can officially uh, begin the evening. Michael Herewood, great to have you. Judith and Clark, a pleasure to have you with us again. Everton Hunt. Lena Bell, uh, Doriel Clark, FX Trading, BB, Richard Bur Burke, good evening, Clive Osborne, Paulette Payne, uh, welcome, thank you so very much for being here, you know, we couldn't do this show without you guys, and we are really deeply appreciative of all of you taking the time to be with us whenever this show is on. And I am honored to be uh, hosting again this, this evening. Well, I'm going to be co-hosting because God willing, guess who is going to be with us? Yes, you're right. Marcia Weeks will be with us tonight. Um, she has been missing, but not out of action. She has been involved in the production of Speak Life that was uh, hosted, uh, shown over the over the last weekend at the Combermere School Auditorium. And my goodness, I, I don't know how many of you got the opportunity to go to it, but it was a tremendous production. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, excellence in every aspect that we could imagine. And, and so she has been really engaged with that production, and hopefully she will be with us again tonight. Good night to you too, Michael Jills and ADG and, and Marva Hunt. And if I call you twice, it's probably because I don't remember calling you once, and, then, and that's okay. I get more familiar with you. Rochelle Thornhill, Errol Callender, good evening to you as well. Marion Griffith, good night to the loyal opposition members. Thank you so much for being here um, yes, oh my goodness, Denzel Grazette, Michael Herewood. Uh, you know, we are honored, we are honored to be with you tonight, and we're going to be touching on some more of the issues again this evening. We, I, I somebody sent me, a, a, um, somebody sent me a photograph of uh, of the of the prime minister with one of my cousins, um, you know, and I must say, you know. I thought that the role that the person is carrying out was a role that would have been would have been done by persons uh, in a professional stand standpoint. Uh, you know, um, I think the it would be. Let me see. It would be the role of the permanent secretary, I believe, with with this signing of the Afro. Uh, let me get this right. The signing of the Afri Afri ex Zim Bank um, at a Lara Court. Under the terms and conditions, uh, the, the, the uh, Kensington will use the proceeds of the loan, which carries a seven-year tenure, to rehabilitate the infrastructure ahead of the 2020 World Cup, scheduled to take place from June the 4th uh, to June the 30th. And this is the first step. She uh, said that I mentioned in the pipeline of 2.4 billion, and we have not talked about the investment pipeline. You know. I, I must tell you, I don't understand the insanity of all of these loans. Who's paying for them? How are we paying for them? The Prime Minister owes it to tell us how for these loans. We are in debt up to our neck. And all we do is keep digging a deeper hole for this country. I am somebody tell me what we are earning from inside of this country we must have been doing something right to get to, the, to where we are today as a country and no specific government can take uh, can take um, credit for that who takes credit for that is the people of this country we who were taxed to death and still being taxed to death. We who put our blood, sweat, blood, sweat, and tears into this country. We're the people who should take the credit for it. A government is simply the management structure that we employ in order to handle the affairs of our country. But they are accountable to us, the people. 
We have governments, and I, I will say this again. We have governments that keep, uh, I, okay, just let me make sure I'm, I'm back in. Are you, I think it might be a little challenge on my, um, how are we How are we now, Remy M? Am I good there now? Um, because it could have been on my connection. Just want to be sure that you're getting me good and loud and clear and consistent right now. Uh, if you could just let me know. I'm so sorry about that. Not hearing you clear. All right, let me try again. Okay, how, how are we doing there now? How are we doing there now? Uh, hoping we, we are, I, I've been, good, thank you, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, so I was saying that, you know, we can no longer do politics in this country as we used to. I am, I'm done with that. We are, we are a republic, even if only by name, because we're still operating in the Westminster colonialistic system. And we need to be doing things differently. And I make no apologies when I make the statement that the work that the government is doing is their job. And I, and I make no apologies for that. The people of Barbados employ you to do that work for them. And as a result, you are accountable not to the Democratic Labour Party, you're not even accountable to the Barbados Labour Party. You are accountable to the people of Barbados. That's who you're accountable to. You are uh, required to report to us. You are required, required to, con sit, to consent with us and to dialogue with us when you're doing major things and major changes in this country. You're going out and giving a ton of loans, sitting down signing a ton of loans in, in your garb and, and whatever. And at the end of the day, who is going to pay for it? You are not, Madam Prime Minister. Neither is your party. The people who are going to pay for it are the people of this country, the citizens of Barbados. And as such, we are demanding. I am not asking anymore. I am demanding that you come to this country and, and don't come to this country with an attitude. You are employed by us. Come in a spirit of humility. Come in a spirit of accountability and explain to the people of Barbados the terms and conditions of every single loan you have taken since you have gone into office. You, you don't just owe that to the people. It, you are obligated by virtue of employment to the people of Barbados. All right. Okay. We are at 570 and I'm going to pause here long enough to take our national anthem before we continue. All right. So let's get to that national anthem. Dave, unfortunately, is not with me yet. Uh, he is coming in. <coughs> Sorry. He is coming in, um, doing some stuff over at the, Combermere School, but let's take the national anthem and proceed into the night.
many, a many, many men, I tell you, strict guardians of our heritage, firm craftsmen of our faith. But I like that line that says, talks about expectations. We have great expectations as a country. And as a result of that, we employ a government to look after our affairs and to look after our business. And what I see is a group of people, you know, I, I told you about that video in which the gentleman spoke about the secret of the success of Singapore. And one of the things he talked about was pragmatism, a position where people, um, sorry, not pragmatism, meritocracy, where he talked about rather than positioning the best people to get the job done, that the countries employ families and friends and relatives and all that stuff. He said that is the is the um, in those are the ingredients for the decline of a country. What we are seeing is exactly that. We are seeing people being appointed to positions where the positions have not even been offered and persons being employed who are friends and family. And, and this is very bothersome. And I am, I am telling you, some of them are, are, are family to me as well. And I make no two bones about it. I don't care. I really don't care who gets upset. There is a, 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 a position. There is a principle of doing things. There are legal requirements in order to meet certain criteria. Caswell has shared with us many of the things required in terms of being involved in the civil service and how it ought to be done. And what we see daily are these things being violated. And I am, I am sick and tired of it. I must tell you the honest to God truth. I am sick and tired of it. We, this country does not belong to the Barbados Labour Party. This country does not belong to the Prime Minister and the members of Parliament. This country belongs to the citizens of Barbados. And you, ma'am, you, Madam Prime Minister, and the members of Parliament, you are required to account to us. And I am not tolerating any disingenuous engagements with the people of this country, and I am going to sit silent. You are unmannerly, as our mother and father, my mother and father would say, you're lacking in the rudiments of common decency when you think that you are doing us a favor by, by responding to our, to our charges and to our requests. We are saying to you, ma'am, to you and your government, give us an account. Give us an account. Is the Grantley Adams Airport sold? What is the position with the Bridgetown Port? What are the terms and conditions for the loan from the Chinese to rehabilitate the Scotland district? What are the terms and conditions with regards to the loan with, uh, that, that was taken for the Sam Lawrence Castle, the agreement there? What is the condition term and terms for the discussion with uh, to, to have uh, electric, electric buses donated by the Chinese government? We need to know the conditions of the loan of this from the Afri. Uh, uh, let me make sure I get it right. Because I I don't I don't want to I don't want to look. Let me tell you something here. I don't want to get these these things wrong. Let me make sure I get it big enough. I can read it. The Afri Exim Bank. What are the terms and conditions of that fifty million dollar loan to rehabilitate Kensington Oval? And what happened to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital? Is cricket more important than the lives of the people in this country? And the Minister of Health has the audacity to sit in Senate and talk rubbish about necessary equipment that is required and having, having the challenge of getting the funding and all that for it? Well, you just get a $50 million loan for Kensington, a, 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 not a human. Kensington is not a human. Is it worth more than the people who go to QEH? You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You see, th this thing of meritocracy, this thing of, of, of pragmatism, the gentleman went on to say it doesn't matter the color of the cat. If it catches mice, it's a good cat. That's what he said. And then, of course, the matter of honesty 
and he said, he said that um, it's the hardest characteristic to achieve that countries are brought down by corruption. They don't, they, they don't punish the senior people. They punish the junior people. You had a minister that presided in of education, presiding over a system that was released in our in our schools against our children and against the parents uh, um, without the parents' knowledge, and not a thing done where she is concerned. Not a thing done. We had the matter of the bathrooms at the school in Saint Philip. Not a thing done, and I could go on and on and on. No accountability. No transparency, no a reporting to the people of this country. And don't talk to me about going to no, no um, meetings, which inevitably are your constituency meetings. Don't talk to me about that. Come to the people of the country in a decent manner and tell us the terms and conditions of the loans you are saddling this country with. All right. Now, I see my good friend come into the back room just now. I, I hope he's got all the technological um, challenges uh, handled. I, I, I know he's tried. Uh, he's probably a little better than I am at all this stuff. But let me bring him in and welcome Mr. Caswell Franklin to this to our. You don't even have to say a word. Yeah. You, how about, <laughs> about me? You got? I'm good. Man, you you are clear as glass. Let me I, 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 went to, I went to the <laughs> Promotech this evening and I bought a little de device to add up on a new, a different iPad. So I'm using a different device altogether and it didn't have the same type of fittings. I worked it out and as soon as I logged on, I said, right on, no problem, it's not dropping out or nothing. Listen, I said, well, it. listen seems to I be am working. sure, I am sure I am not as clean as you are. You sound absolutely brilliant, man. Whatever you did is is has enhanced your voice. <laughs> yeah, I, Welcome, I, bought yes, so I Welcome. just bought a little device. It didn't cost too much, but it seems to be working. And it's a yes, small price yes. of it was sixty five dollars, but a small price to pay to um to get clean stuff. To get, to get clean on this show, I want everybody to hear what I am saying. Anyhow, good night, everybody. Good night, Freddie, and good night, good everyone. Night. Who good was to logged in to once again to hear us? I, I, I'm, I'm, you might not realize it, but I'm very humble that people would want to hear me. You know, well, um, I, I am agree in agreement with you. You know, so um, I will do my best never to mislead, and always tell the truth. So you would raise from that that I'm not a politician, because. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Sam Clark. <laughs> Sam Clark pulling in on us from Brooklyn. Good evening, Sam. Good to have you with us this evening. Go yeah, ahead, Caswell. So, so I, I'm not a politician, and I so I don't I don't intend ever to be. Anyhow, I, you were talking about corruption, and that is one of the things that was going to feature in because I want to talk about the bus. You know, you be, I promised to talk about the buses last night. Yes, yes, and I and, have it. I have the. I have the. Um, let me see if I can just get this thing off of it. I, I don't know. Let me see if I can share. Uh, hopefully you can see, but I have the article up from um from the Barbados today. So let me see if I can if I can get it up there for you. Can let me know if you're seeing it. There you go. Yes. Right, Barbados right, right, right. equipment for electric buses. Yes, I am. I am. I want to tell the people of this country that they should be scared and ride in those buses. I want somebody to come out and say that I'm lying. Don't, don't ignore me this time. And I can tell you why. Last year, around July, I think it was, one of these same electric buses was involved in an accident. They blamed the driver. The driver reported at the scene that the brakes were not working. He was standing up. He was standing on the brakes. The brakes were right down to the floor. And he was off his seat with his entire weight on the brakes trying to get a bus stop. But luckily for him and the people in the bus, there was another bus in front. So that stopped the bus. 
And then as soon as that happened, the brakes engaged. The brakes started to work after because they got something called ABS brakes. I don't know what it means. Anti-lock breaking, anti breaking system. That's I to stop, I, you know the screeching that you hear when you're braking? It's to stop that and make the tires adhere better so that you get a faster and more a right. better brake. Well, they tell me that as soon as after that, the bus finally came to a stop because the bus in front was was parked, was stopped. It couldn't get any further. Then the brakes, the this uh, this ABS brake thing clicked in. I don't know what it is for you just explain it, but so that happened. Now, if you are the scene of an accident and you report to the investigating officer from the transport board that the brakes did not engage, you are required to call the people at Public Works, MTW, and let them test the brakes. Transport board refused. They did not test the brakes when the person said the brakes was not. And mind you, those buses are completely computerized. You know everything is going on in those buses. Everybody from the driver right down the back of the bus is, is, is on camera. You can see everybody. They refuse to disclose that camera in the, in the case for the man because, and the, the footage from that camera because it would have shown him standing on the brakes. And they didn't want that to be known. So they would not allow that into evidence. They will not present it in evidence. I can't get it, of course, because it's not my bus. I can't go and take up anything. So the brakes aren't working. They refuse to provide the evidence. And they did not bring in the um, people who are supposed to examine the brakes because, as we know, the MTW people are supposed to come, especially with government vehicles, and test the brakes at the scene of an accident. Now, my investigations tell me that that was not the only bus, one of these electric buses with brake problems. They have several problems with brakes. Mind you, they can't get parts. And they may got nobody to work on the buses because they, even though they gave them to UCAL to fix, the people at UCAL are not trained um, to, uh, to on these buses to fix them. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem here now is, is the transport board is being run by a ZR man. I kid you not, the guy who's actually CEO of the transport board has the fleet of ZRs and taxis of his own. He is competing with the transport board as an owner of ZR vehicles, but yet still being the CEO or the uh, manager of the transport, whatever they call him, that is questionable. You cannot mm -hmm. be competing Constant with me. I have, a, I have crews working for me with my own buses, but I am no CEO of the transport board that competes with, those, with, with, with my buses. Something is wrong there. And the, the person who dismissed my man, even though there was no evidence to dismiss him, that person is paying back $6,000 a month for some money that mis was misappropriated and nobody would, because apparently she has she went to Queen's College. Need I say more? Around the same time with the Prime Minister. So rather than call the police and lock her up, she's paying back $6,000 a month. I hear people getting all kind of fancy figures. I do not know the exact figure. But six thousand dollars a month to, to settle off a debt under a year because you're supposed to pay it back within a year, or you never know if you got special dispensation. So the transport board is in a mess when it mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. to parts, type of vehicles, and I believe you see that again they want to throw these buses. So they give them to us to see if we would kill a few of our own. Because mind you, we paying we paying for the opportunity to to expert to be to be experimented on. The buses are not safe. They are always in accidents, and the reason why they're in accidents is because the brakes don't work. Now I I dare anybody from the transport board to come out and deny anything that I have said so far tonight. You know, one man is home. That, that, that the bus that, that was the driver of the bus that didn't have any brakes working and of course the cameras and everything are working Th those buses are so equipped you can tell how fast the bus was driving you can tell how much fuel in the tanks you can tell uh not, 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 i mean the um 
you know there's a meter that says how much they charge then okay? yes, yes yes how much charge you got on the um and the, the thing you know it can tell you everything and it also takes video of of the oncoming traffic and the people in the bus so all of that could have been available they didn't produce that, that information because they wanted to blame somebody it is always better in their books to blame somebody for the accident than to acknowledge that they are sending the wrong people driving the wrong death traps that is that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell mind you but all the other but they have a lot of whole other bunch of confusion in terms of who they employ because the people who were there have been overlooked for new for newbies. Again, when I say newbies, I mean newbies. As opposed to people with the experience. Something has to happen with the transport board. And I keep saying to you that the transport board, like you will keep repeating, is not designed to make money. It was designed to provide a service. And our taxpayers were supposed to help fund it. No, they are taking taxpayers' money. This is money transport board make transport. We don't make the money, really. And they're taking the most lucrative routes now and giving them to the people who drive the ZRs and stuff. They call them the TAP program. Right? So the transport board again, well, even the, even though they're not designed to make money, will not make money because the best routes are not serviced by their own vehicles. They give them to other people. And there are some people in this, in this tap program, or whatever they call it, who refuse to do long haul because they want quick turnaround, go up the road, and get their 350 and manica back down the road rather than have to take long haul. So the transport board is, to the most extent, is burdened with the long haul routes that might, you might go up with bus low, but it might not come back down with any, anybody in it. So mm -hmm. that also is probably the government needs to fix this. This nonsense about um, bringing in these people, government got to decide what is the, their policy, what's the transport policy for the country as opposed to quick fixes and patches because it just causes less money. And again, I don't know if the, the, the people say you gotta spend money to make money, and you know, like, you know, like if you fix a bus, you don't necessarily get a good kickback. But if you buy one, the kickback may be better. So all of these things you have to take into account. But I don't know if that is the reason why they're gonna buy new buses rather than find people to fix the ones they got. Well, I and, don't know. I don't think they're buying these from the report. Uh, from the report that I'm reading, Casma, it says. Um, the agreement for the acquisition, but I want to drop down and say that the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, you can see it there, Kerry Simmons and the CIDCA's chairman, uh, that Chinese name, uh, inked the agreement which is based on a request by Barbados for the donation of electric buses from China. Now, I was just uh -oh. searching, yeah, I was just searching for an article, uh, uh, um, if I can find it before. We conclude tonight. I, if I can't, not a problem. But, um, you know, the United States, I can't remember uh, who it is in the United States, is calling for the government to ban the importation of Chinese electric vehicles. And they were stating uh, something to do uh, with um, with the whole aspect of the batteries and the system. Catching a fire. Using. Yeah. Now, what a lot of people don't realize, Caswell, is that lithium batteries and water are not friends. Worse yet, if it's seawater. I don't know how many people remember what happened when I think it was um, last year, there was a storm or hurricane that went across Florida. And, uh, and it, there was a lot of flooding. in I think in the Tampa area, that would be north of the west, side, the west coast of, uh, of the United States, the Panhandle, uh, Tampa area, that area, St. Petersburg. And a number of the, of the electric cars were underwater. When the water subsided, the fire department was obviously working with the people in the area to, to you know, uh, reduce the amount of flooding and so on, you know, with their, with their equipment. And all of a sudden, these vehicles started to catch a fire. And the fire, well, some of the fire guys um, 
weren't aware of it, but they turned the water hoses on the vehicles and that was adding fuel to fire. And the thing just erupted, you know, and we have seen the videos of a number of, of electric vehicles just erupting in car parks. And there is a, right now, Caswell, Ford and, and uh, GM, two of the largest automobile producers in America, have millions, I think, thousands, let me say, hundreds of thousands of vehicles sitting in their parking lots that they cannot get sold and will not sell because they're electric vehicles. And, of course, a lot of people discovered that during the winter season, those vehicles were of no use to them. I read an article by a gentleman who runs a trucking company who changed out his entire fleet for electric trucks. And then, because they were unreliable, they didn't hold the charges. It took too long to charge. It was not economically viable for him to continue. He, he, he got rid of every one of them and went back to diesel. <coughs> now, I hear a lot of talk, um, Caswell, about greening Barbados and, and not relying on fossil fuels and, and that type of thing. I hear a lot of talk about it, but I want to ask the people who are pushing all of this, do you know where lithium originates? Africa. Do you know how it's mined, Caswell? Yeah, um, they get little children to go down and dig it up. I've watched the videos, and I, and I, I, see, I and have they, not and heard. Sex. Yeah, yeah, I have not heard a single member of the Barbados government chastise the the manufacturers of lithium batteries for the abuse of children and child slavery. Not one. Not one. I have heard speak out against the abuse and slave involvement of African children in the production in the production of um, lithium batteries. And then the next question that comes is, uh, Caswell, is this. What are they going to do in another 15 years? Because you know time is flying very fast, right? You know that. I mean, just the other day I was 14 and I am up in 60 something years old now. And it just seemed like a couple of days ago, but uh, time is flying quickly. I want to know what is government's plan for these hundreds of batteries that will have to be changed out because lithium batteries have a lifespan. They can be recharged only so many times. And as far as I know, Lithium is one of the most eruptive things to put into an environment. I would like to know what is the plan? What is the plan um, with, with uh, what is the plan for those batteries? And you know what I discovered too, Caswell? Some of those lithium batteries in the cars cost nearly the same amount as the car. Yeah, the, the, like for instance, the car, the battery costs about $80,000. You know, I, I, I don't I don't understand. People are not being very well informed with regards to this. Um, to my mind, I, I don't know. I've seen so much. And and again, you see, it is the matter of, of silencing the opposition. I have listened to the experts in the automotive industry cautioning the governments with going full into electric vehicles and the challenges that they're going to have and the risk that they have to the environment but all i can hear people talking about is 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 carbon dioxide pollution and the first thing is i didn't know vehicles produce carbon dioxide that's the first thing i thought vehicles produce carbon monoxide but i hear carbon dioxide now and i heard a very uh, a so-called very intelligent individual on a ted talk talk about getting to zero emissions in terms of carbon dioxide. And I ask the question, so when you get to zero emissions of carbon dioxide, what are the plants going to breathe? And if the plants can breathe and give out the oxygen that we breathe, what's going to happen to the human race? Sometimes I wonder if these people who sit in those positions use their brains at all, or if they just get in, 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 um, uh, you know what is what is wrong with these people? I'll tell you what is wrong with them. You you would have a child at home with you, and you think this child is a very nice child. But then they go down the road, 
but they're friends or they go to school with their friends and then you hear about the behavior of your child you're shocked same thing happened with governments and ministers going overseas you think they got little sense but they go out there and then people talk all around them and stuff they come out there so agree to everything and following everybody doing foolish things in our country because you but you would have seen it the computer test the um cyber crime thing you know all of these things are not homegrown the the the, the um the jobs none of it's are homegrown we just listen to other people and feel that they're no better than us and we rush off and do it we don't have people who think for themselves I, 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 but mind you we, we we select them so we are we are ready to blame we, we, we the people who put them in office you know so but now we are the people who can take them out and it's about time i have i have done my part someone said 50 to 80 to replace yeah, the for replacement for electric batteries car. yeah yeah, and, I, I, and again, um, you know, I, I have a 1996, I mentioned it last night uh, on Caswell, I got a 1996 Subaru, which I bought used. All right? And and um, so the person is making a good point. You buy a car, you keep it for four or five years to sell it. Somebody is going to take that vehicle for another four to five years. That person is going to have to replace the battery. That's that's ten to 20,000 for the hybrids, 50 to 80,000 for the full electric vehicles. My question now is what are what are they doing with them batteries now in another uh 10 years? They can't put them in the landfill in Barbados. You they can't put them there. No, they're not allowed. Are are you going to bury them and 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 you know <laughs> I tell you, I see. Look at, look at, look at what, um, look at what I just and Cami Holder saying. I guess we will bury the lithium deep as we do with thousands of vehicle tires. We fail to ratify the real principle ten declaration. Barbados will speak globally but never act locally. You know, that's I, a, that's I don't, a, that's a, that's a true. You know, we we yeah. we go there to yeah. all these conferences and we talk pretty pretty pretty, but we come to Barbados and we do not do the things. It happens in labor. You go to the ILO. You sign up on all kinds of things, and then you come back about business and you treat the workers like crap. Decent work and all kinds of things. It sounds pretty, but don't happen. So it, 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 it isn't only with, it is every sphere of activities that the government gets involved in because we elect people who cannot lead us, who don't have the capacity to lead. There were, there were followers from birth and they will continue to be followers. So when they go overseas, they sit down and applaud. Well, look, you can see, the, and, and, and to show the quality of the people you are sending, we just send a, a, tra a truck driver to, dis to deal with water issues in, in, in the Netherlands, you know? That, that is the, the level that we, we go, we carry our friends and family rather than get people who are equipped and who have the ability to handle these issues. I am very sorry, but Barbados has no, graduated to be a banana republic and, and it's and, and it's, it's sad it's sad um um caswell you know we we are and, and i said it here i said it here tonight you've heard me repeat this over and over caswell that the government is our employee the people of barbados are the employers of government and yet we are not consulted on anything the people are not reported to on the return of any of these people from their overseas trips. And I, I tell you, I heard some figures last night. I want to, I want to yeah. hope that what Mr. Thorne shared last night in his meeting is not true in terms of the monies being spent, in terms of travel. And what is what is given from the taxpayers? You're you're being paid by the people of this country. This is what gets me really annoyed. You're getting on like you own this country, like if it is your your domain. You are the king or queen of of this country, and we are your servants. We are not. The tables are turned in a democratic country, particularly a republic where the people are the employers and the government is the employee and i will stand on i will stand my ground on this you ought to be given a report 
to the people of Barbados, you should be calling a press conference on your return to report on what your trip was about, what you achieved, and what were the terms and conditions of any documents you have signed. You owe it to the people of the country to tell them because when you are dead and gone, the people of the country are going to be left saddled with your recklessness. And that is what, uh, I, and I will be cautious about saying it, that is what angers me. We, these people are getting on like they own the country and they can do what they like and they don't have to ask Tom, Dick or Harry nothing and say nothing to nobody. It is and called contempt. You hold the people of this country in contempt. You, you sure do not, not care. <laughs> you do not care what they think. You care at one time. And that's at election time. And at election time, you sweeten them with some money that illegally gain money and illegally spent money. And the people respond to that. And that is why we are now in the mess that we are in because we have not selected a government that can govern so in other words we have not we have not selected a government on the terms of merit mm -hmm. we, we we selected and the Belgians um should should be ashamed that they allow people to buy their votes i i, I um i i've heard of situations i've seen pictures where um former mps were in constituencies giving out money. Not, not in the current MPs, they were canvassing on behalf of their party colleagues and they were out there with bags of money hand out. And some people were photographing about the ones um site them. I seen the photographs. So what are you going to do? But, but further before I get too far from the transport board, there's some other things that I want to talk about the transport board in terms of not, not very many, but what is okay. happening with the workers at the transport board. Mm -hmm. Or the retired workers at the transport board. You know, driving a bus after a while, you know, you don't, you, you know, you, you, you become almost incapacitated. Just saying, you no, know, they're driving a bus all the time. After 40, I start to go on top. And once you got, when you start to retire, you know, because they say, you know, your vision starts to change at 40. I'm testament to that. At 40, I, had, I, had, I, could, I was very malicious, I could see everything. And then the eyes start giving me little problems that I can. I got very reading glasses and things, though, so I can't see everything. But when the buses are coming, the lights are coming toward you, that's another issue that we're going to talk about tonight. Because we have some bright, bright lights. And the laws in Barbados said the light should be yellow, not these white lights that blind you. But sometimes I have to, and they don't dim. So when you see them coming at you, you better find where the edge of the road is and stop. But back to the transport the only, board. Yeah, yeah. Because the only thing I will quickly mention here, Caswell, is particularly on the production vehicles. I'm not talking on replacement bulbs. Particularly on the production vehicles. A lot of the manufacturers are now producing vehicles that when you, when you dip, if you dip, the lights uh, should veer over to your left. And some of the more high-end vehicles will actually dip the lights for you, whether you like it or not, because of the technology that is now available. But I do agree that I have noticed a trend in Barbados that people do not dip lights at night anymore. I have noticed that. And I am sure a lot of other people, and it's very difficult to see when they don't. But they're the wrong lights. The law don't allow you to, to have those lights on vehicles. And they can tell me that the that this is what the manufacturers make. And in, in, in Bermuda, Bermuda is small and they require certain size cars and that kind of stuff. And you have to, but the people have to modify the cars before they land in Bermuda to change them to meet Bermuda's specifications. And we Bermuda is 21 miles long and a mile wide. It's a 21 square mile island. And the importers have to comply with the laws of Barbados. Why are we having difficulty telling the one? Oh, these are the manufacturers' specific. No, tell the manufacturer if you want to bring those cars to Barbados, you got to put in the proper lights. It's simple thing to do. But as I said, back to transport board. Yes, sir. I I talk about this a couple nights back, but I want to reinforce it because I'm getting the uh, WhatsApp message about it here now. Right. Mm -hmm. We have situations where people at the transport board, who are essentially government workers. The transport board is owned by the government. 
and the only government entity that does not receive a gratuity is the workers from the transport board. Really? Mind, yeah. Mind you, hmm. they used to receive pension. The older drivers, when they retired, they would get their pension and gratuity as provided for in the Transport Board Act. The union that represented the majority of the Transport Board are misrepresenting as the case may be. You know, they want to give the people the impression that they were doing things for them. And they went out there and tried to enhance the the, the, the the pensions. But instead of enhancing them, they eliminated the pensions for the drivers. Now, my argument is and always will be that a union cannot negotiate away your terms and conditions that were given to you in your contract. The unions don't, don't change your contract for you. So they had no authority whatsoever to go and negotiate people's pensions away. And the thing is, the pension was calculated in the same way that is the pensions in the public service was uh, were calculated, All right? So there was no need to tamper with that, but they wanted to pretend that they were doing something and give people the impression. But the trans, but this, and the transport were liked it, so they didn't, they didn't make any fuss because then they were gonna pay all this money. Since, um, my some of the transport board workers came and joined my union. I started on a campaign to make sure they get back their gratuities and pensions. And the government recognized that what they did to those people over the years was wrong and contrary to the law. But rather than go back and find some money to pay back all those people who retired and did not get their gratuity and pension, the prime minister said that she can start it. Start by paying back the gratuities for people who retired in 2018. Mind you, so the fellow who went home in 2017 and get his gratuity, which is wrong. He was always entitled to it. It was just a mistake that the union, and that's when I say the union, I mean the Barbados Workers Union, because when I hear union, they might include me in there. And I had nothing to do with it. So the, all those people who retired over the years, because the old drivers used to get pension. To, to show you how really ridiculous it was. When they had negotiated the way the pension for the drivers, they kept the pension for the office staff. So the office staff continued to receive their gratuity and pensions, while the drivers, who, as far as I'm concerned, are the most important people at the transport board. Because if you don't have drivers, you ain't got the transport board. Because you can have as many accountants, secretaries, clerks, whatever you have. But if the drivers don't go there and bring in the passengers and bring in the money, you don't got to work for them in there. So the most important people at the board itself are the drivers. But everybody else was getting pensions and gratuity. And the drivers were not. But the prime minister now decided, oh, she's going to start paying back pensions from people in 2018 because when she come into office, she does not understand that government is a continuum. So if one government before made a mistake, that was her mistake too. And she has to fix it. No, she decided that she is going to pay from 2018. Remember 2018 was when we had the first 30 love. But however, even though they said that they would pay pensions and gratuities to the staff, they're not getting them. We have instances here now, and I'm reminded of two who worked for over 42 years at the transport board. And now at the end of their career, no pension like the permanent secretary, no pension like the clerk in the, in the government department, no pension like the, the um, home helper, no pension like um, police, no pension like teachers, just they don't get anything. And they, are, and they, don't, they haven't gotten their gratuity because a, a gratuity, what people don't understand, people think gratuity is some fancy thing. What we do in Barbados, a gratuity is part of your pension. They give you your pension, a quarter of your annual pension, and it was determined back 
back in the 40s, 1947 to be exact, that persons used to live for 12 and a half years after they retire. Retirement age used to be 55. So they said back then, people by 67 and a half, people they're gone. A little rare occasion, but you know, some might go above that and some might fall short. But that's the way it works, you know, that's how insurance works. And so they give you that, they take that quarter, they take a quarter of your pension. So it is not nothing that the government is giving you. This is a pension that was supposed to be either put down there for you because they were paying you less than you were supposed to be getting. And they give you that quarter times 12 and a half. So that's what you would have gotten in 12 and a half years to give you one thing. So that you can fix your roof, do a little thing around your house to make sure that you're comfortable in your declining years. But the transport board people are not getting it. And if you will permit me, Freddy, to, um, cause I'm, I'm responding to things that people, so only today, you know, and I, and I, I don't understand. We marched, we had, um, we had, we had meetings on the truck. We spoke, we had the March week show, and we try to explain to people what the government has done to people who are joining the service from the 1st of January this year. They are now finding out that they are contributing to their pensions. But we were telling them that from the show. That, as a matter of fact, that is how I got involved in the show. Because when the, the national insurance was being tampered with, they tampered with the pensions at the same time. As a matter of fact, they put the two big bills together and said it was a cognitive debate. So they debated both together. So public officers know how to contribute um, 3% or or something like that. I can't believe that figure now to their pension. And the thing is, you're getting less pension. When the government contributed the full amount to your pension, you got more pension than when you are contributing some. I, I don't understand how that works. You know, now that, now that more money is supposed to be put down there for you, um, somebody asked, um, Caswell, is that true that pensions will no longer come from the Treasury, but only the NIS? Um, and I, the, the NIS will be pay a master. The public service pensions will still come from the Treasury because there are two pensions involved. There's a national insurance pension and then there is a service a pension that you get for your public service. Well, the government has changed the pay master from the Treasury to national insurance. So national insurance now will pay both. I suspect that is the way to, you know, because Prior to 1975, the first of December 1975, if you join the public service, you get a, you get your government pension, and then you also get a national insurance pension. After the first of September 1975, if you join the public service, your pension from the treasury is supposed to be reduced by the amount you get from the NIS. Again, I will, I want to fight this in court because only. The president, former governor, general, no president, had the power to reduce your pension on the recommendation of a, of a service commission. Except you were a person like a judge or a politician where you receive your pension as of right. Because your pensions as a public officer were, were not there as a right. You get them, but you had to go through some hoops to get them. And if for some reason you committed an offense before the, and you were traded before the court, they can stop your pension. Now if a politician steals and goes to jail and Barbados, because his pension is of a right, he has a right to his pension. The pension is paid to become the jail, is, it goes on his bank account. If you're a public officer and you commit an offense, mind you, your agent should play, stop playing the fool and behave good. But if you find yourself in that situation 
they will stop your pension. And then, when you come out, they will not replace it unless you do some begging, pleading and begging, and hope you got some good friends, because it's not restored automatically. But for a person like a judge or an MP, their pensions can't be stopped. That sounds strange, but both give public service, but one has their pension as a right. And the other pension, even though it has been going on from time immemorial, now where you will get your pension, and it would be it would be difficult to say no, we're not getting the pension because everybody it would be discrimination because they have to give everybody else a pension. But you can lose your pension for misbehavior. Or you could refuse to award it for misbehavior. So if you think because um you you go and keep some money and when the time comes to they catch you, you retire. That doesn't necessarily mean that you will get your pension. All it means is that the people they say, leg alone. You know, they don't they don't they don't proceed with the law against you. But there is a situation where you can lose it. And but again, that is very that is not well known. You know, like but there are too many things in the public service that are not well known. I really feel public officers should get their hands on the documents that govern their um, employment and, and and delve into them and have to have queries asked. Because only, as I said today, the very last call I got, I was packing up to leave the office and the phone rang my assistant, sent me the phone for me. And somebody don't like to miss calls. So I turned back to answer. And it was a person come asking about if it is true that you got to pay this money now from the 1st of January. They didn't know because government tell nobody nothing. The only way they ever became aware, people became aware about the people who were listening to the show, you know. And then we had the marches. They did not disclose it's going to be a fundamental change in the public service in Barbados. And as a result, to qualify for your pension in the public service, public service, I'm talking about public service as a like people in ministries as opposed to statutory boards. People in the public service qualify for their pension after 33 and the third years, 400 months. Under this new legislation that they, that they brought into force from the 1st of January, you now have to work 40 years to qualify for a full pension. Mind you, the pension, when you work it out, is going to be less than you were getting when you were working for 30, 20, 30 years, even though you are not contributing toward it. I, I put an actual contribution on. You're going to get less. So a government make you work longer to give you less. And, of course, why, why that is not very well known, and people will not even care because a lot of the people say, well, they're already in, so it didn't apply to me. It's going to apply to the people after, that come after us. And we've got to start caring about our people. Because if the units had stood up in 1975 to Arabara, when he told them, you can't represent the people who are employed yet. They're not your members yet. So that's when he decided he, can, he cut in the... Because the, the unions, well, not the unions, and UPW had a pause because the, 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 the Barbers Workers Union didn't have a lot of public servants and they didn't do a lot of fighting for public officers those days. The NUPW that used to fight, they were complaining that it was wrong and the Prime Minister said to them, look, all right, well, we are not going to trouble your members because they were planning to cut everybody's. But the concession was, okay, these people are not your members yet, so you can't, you can't negotiate for them. So the union sat back and then when those people come in, they tell them, oh, thing. Not then trying to fight this matter for any one of those persons. And I can tell you, it is hurtful because you're working next to a man. For instance, you come to work August for the first time in your life, August 1975. You know, you can get two pensions, but the fellow who can work on the, the 2nd of um, September, I, I just he, he only got a, a week 
more than you, he can get two pens, you can get one. It is not fair. It is not reasonable. It is, it is. But government trying to find ways to balance the, the, the budget, and they always do it on, against the workers. When, when, when they want to find money to... When they want to save money or they want to cut, they cut back, they cut back public workers. That's where we had the 8% cut. That's where we had everything. Because there's always the public workers. Because they know that the public workers can grumble, but then they're going, they're going, um, the, the grumbling will subside. It is, it is nothing new. You know, I, I'm seeing some, I'm seeing one or two comments. Here. You know, you know, there are things, Kazu, that you, you you have to try to ignore. But let me just say this. I listened last night to some of the contributors at the at the um, Christchurch constituency branch, Christchurch South, and they credited this show with information, people receiving information and honest facts and truth. And I, I, you know, I want to say we are not here, as somebody mentioned, to be thrill seekers. We are here to deal in facts and truth. I want to say to some to some of the individuals that come on the show on the on the on the platform, um, you're entitled to your own opinions. You're not entitled to your own facts. What Mr. Mr. Um, Franklin is sharing are facts that people do not know. And as a result of it, people are taken advantage of, you know, people coming in through the airport uh, are being addressed by, by uh, customs and immigration officers. And even the customs and immigration officers that are working at the airport are not themselves aware of some of the things that Mr. Franklin is engaging. So we're not here. We're not here to create some. Um, you know, uh, fancy do that. We're here dealing in facts and not impressions. We're here dealing in truth. And so, you know, if you're, if you're looking for all of the sensationalism, wrong platform. We're here dealing factually, right? Caswell, yeah, so before before uh, we get, we lose too much time because it's after seven and I, I, I know we have some folk coming in. It's after I wanna, eight. Uh, I mean, after eight. I wanted to shift very quickly uh, to an article I mentioned last night, just as just briefly as we as we roll through the um, through the information that we indicated we would be trying to share during the program. Uh, I don't know if you have seen this article. This was also carried in the Barbados today. I will bring it up there for you to see, and you can let me know if you are seeing it clearly, if you are able to to make out what is saying. Um, Barbados but growth in, projections dip below 4%. Now, we were being told, were we not, that Barbados is a buzz with activity. Am I correct or did I miss something somewhere? Um, if, you were, if you were wrong, we got our information from the same source then because we were, were misleading both you and me. So, so Barbados is supposed to be a buzz with activity and and all this kind of stuff. But the World Bank, look at there, look. Look at the article. The World Bank slightly lowered its 2024 growth forecast for Barbados to 3.7% in its regional economic outlook. I referenced this last night compared to 4% outlined in the Global Economic Prospects Report published just in January. And they went on to say that the global financial institution further outlined prospects of 2.8% and 2.3% for the next two years, 2025 and 2026. Now, if I don't know a lot about economics, I wish we could get Anthony Wood on, on the program sometime. I don't know a lot about it, but as far as I am aware, and you can correct me if I am wrong, 3.7% is less than 4%. And uh, isn't 2.8 and 2.3 less than 3.7? Or is my <laughs> mathematics incorrect? Because this is not what the central bank governor informed the country of. And in reality, I beg the question again, what is Barbados earning? What are we generating to earn? I know we're taking a lot of loans and we're taking loans to do a lot of things. But my question is, who is going to be paying for these loans? How are these loans to be paid for? 
and what are the terms and conditions? I mean, what are your thoughts, uh, Caswell, with regards, I, I know you may not be necessarily an economist, and I know Kimar is going to be coming on later, but what are your thoughts in terms of these prospects? For, what, what do you think is going to be happening on the basis of what the World Bank is saying in Barbados over the next three years? Look, um, a young guy being economist, my mother raised nine of us, nine children, and she worked in the plantation. We never went hungry. I never been stay hungry, but not necessarily that because once they give me some cash, roll and tell me I have to get an X ray, and hey, I can't eat nothing after six o'clock. So that night I stay hungry. But um, other than that, so she was a, more, a better economist than these people who got all the millions because she had the, the bases and plantations were quite small, and she was able to make sure that we had clothes on our backs. Not a lot of clothes, but we had enough food to keep us and to keep and going so, uh, so the people with the degrees seem not to understand what they're doing because they go out and they learn a lot of stuff and a lot of um formulae and stuff they don't really know what they're talking about because let me tell you something we had a series of loans this government can remember this, this this is probably one of the most um loans we've ever had in all the years since this government came into office and I remember hearing Lisa Cummins and everybody saying it's the cheapest loans on the books, the cheapest barbers get the cheapest loans. I don't know if I remember that one percent. Yeah, yes. I remember I remember that well. But they don't know what they were doing because they did not understand that these loans had variable rates. And when the what they call the thing in England, the LIBOR, thing when the when the um the rate goes up. Then the loans go up. No, the loans went up 400%. The, the interest rates on this loan went up 400% that we got to pay now. So we went and put ourselves in serious jeopardy. And But they, they had never planned that people like me and you, Freddie, will ever be, will be paying back these loans. They're talking about not your children. Your grandchildren will be paying these loans. Well, no, because of the hike in interest rates that we are seeing, uh, uh, the, the um. It will not only be your grandchildren, it will be their children that will be paying back some of these loans. The unfortunate thing is government don't seem to care because they will incur all this debt and they will um, get a lot of it to travel with and do all that kind of stuff because Barbados is not producing anything really. The few little things that we produce cannot cover the insatiable appetite we have for foreign exchange. So we are really borrowing to pay back loans. We are not borrowing for productive purposes. I can understand if you had borrowed to do a factory or borrow to do something of that sort that we will get something, back. Something that you're export. investing in. Yeah, that you yeah. will get so something in return. But we, all we are doing is borrowing money to export it over to pay um, debt. So that is that's like a Ponzi scheme. It, it will it will explode on you sometime. You At can't some keep on borrowing and paying back, paying back. Pay back, pay back. Barbados will end up bankrupt. That's how Argentina was. But look at if look we, at what... if, we, if we continue along this path, and be, be, because and by the government, as I said, they don't care because they're going to be on the office when this crisis comes, you know. And, look, and, look, and they're going to put the problem on the other the, whoever comes in. They're going to say, "Well, they've been managing the economy. No, they've been managing the economy. You can't hmm. manage." Then you got you got the money to manage the economy can be can, can tank. This is what this 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 I think this is the Barbers the party strategy, you know. Create enough debt, create enough problems with the next people that are coming in. And then you will say, see, they can't run nothing. When we were there, we had Kaduma, we had all these kind of fancy things. No, you can't afford to bring the the, the um materials to make your, your um costumes because they may got the money to foreign exchange. They can blame it all on the next party that went for the next government. We need they, they need to account for what they are borrowing and, and why they are borrowing it and where it is going. I you you cannot, in all conscience, borrow money with a lot of fancy um things. Oh, this is climate change. This is for this and this is the next all kind of fancy thing, and spend it on air, tra air, air travel. 
but Kiazza, look at what look at what Mr. I think he's Mr. William Maloney. He says whether it's two percent or two point five percent or one point five percent, these rates of growth are just way too low to make a meaningful dent in poverty reduction or facilitate social mobility. We have to be thinking of a 10-year horizon of what reforms we need to undertake as a region to get us talking about growth rates of perhaps 5%. It is clear from his analysis that we are, our economy is heading downwards and not upwards. That is clear from his statement. He said the factors driving these growth numbers include low levels of investment and domestic consumption, again, agreed, elevated interest rates and high fiscal deficits, high fiscal deficits, declining commodity prices and uncertainty in the prospects of important partners such as the US, China, Europe and other G7 countries. I mean, clearly, clearly, Caswell, from reading, this is the chief economist for Latin America and the Caribbean. Th this is not my words. This is his words. This is his words. So if we don't have something that drives our economy, something that drives return on investment, something that drives production, something that drives income for the country, we have a major crisis on our hands. And it's just that we are here. Apparently, the government is not owning up to it or is not prepared to, to engage the people and say to the people of Barbados that we, we need to put our heads together to see how we can dig ourselves out of this hole. I don't know if it you ever heard the story. You ever heard the story, Caswell, where I think it was Japan. Was it Japan or Singapore where all the people in the country brought all of their gold? I can't remember. I had seen the story some time ago. It brought all of their gold to the government so that they could get the, the country out of the hands of the International Monetary Fund. And to be honest with you, I'm not suggesting we do a similar thing, but until we all put our heads together, Barbados is, is facing some very dark days ahead. We are already feeling it. Go ahead. No, but you see, the thing is, we will feel it because they tell you what they want you to hear, not necessarily the truth. If you hear the rosy projections coming from the government, and you see in this analysis coming from um, William Maloney, chief economist for Latin America and the Caribbean. And the Caribbean. If you see the two analyses, you will not recognize one. They're both talking about Barbados. And who do I tend to believe? I tend to believe in the independent third party mm -hmm. because. Mm -hmm. The government has something to lose by giving us the truth. These people don't have the World Bank people. They don't. They don't have to. They don't lose anything. They can tell the truth, and so what? As far as they're concerned, they're little barbarians. But these people will lose their seats, so they're gonna make it sound rosy. But Freddie, look, when we want to pay for goods and services, right? You you don't pay for the Barbados dollars. No. So you have to earn the foreign exchange to pay for the U.S. Sorry, could you repeat that word again? You have to what? Earn. Earn. Yeah, right? not borrow. And, earn. Yeah, and, and when you earn it, the, the kind of thing, we, got, we either have to produce some sort of commodity to sell or we got to sell some services. Um, we don't have a lot of manufacturing. It is too expensive to manufacture in Barbados. Electricity costs alone will kill you. So uh, people who um, manufacture, they're, not, they're only going to be manufacturing for local consumption. You might sell a few down in St. Lucia and a couple in Antigua, and other, but you're not going to be able to produce the kind of numbers that can help it take us out of a hole because our salaries, people keep telling they're high. They're not really high. It is just that the cost of production, but all this, let's blame it on salary, but then really start because you cannot ask a man to come and work for pittance and then has to live in this society where everything is really high. 
unless you're looking to make paupers of the tradesmen and the people who will actually be doing the manufacturing. So government has to find a way, and it cannot be the kind of uh, um, services that they are getting us involved in. Because what they have been doing over the years is to invite people to Barbados with call centers. So you call in and you say your TV program ain't working or something, you, video that you hadn't working and stuff, and, it, and you have to do with that. It, you're taking our young, mostly young girls, to work in these kind of environments. They just get a few dollars. They don't get a lot of money for it. But the reason why that, this, that back office work is done in Barbados, because the minimum wage um, in, in, in places like United States is too high to support that. So they're, they're farming out. They sent it to um, India. They sent it to Barbados. They sent it to a lot of other countries. Right now, Trinidad is doing a lot of our back office work. And because you're talking to a guy on the phone and you hear, and he says, Right. He said, he, I used to be young Barbados. He tell me no. But I can't talk English. And he's fighting hard to speak English, but the, the work is done here. And we have a similar situation where Belgians are trying to communicate with people who don't have a Belgian accent. And that's, and that's what they call investment. Again, people come here and exploit our, our, our young ladies. Mind you, the young ladies take the jobs because they've not got nothing else. And, and um, I think it is that. Or you're all going to learn how to bread here or something like that. So we in, the, the government is not looking for opportunities. I'm talking about serious opportunities that can, that can develop our people. When when these people get vexed or they find another lower cost destination, they they move out and they take and 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 because they just have an office space and some computers, they, they might even leave these damn computers it? because they they not worth much. But then, the num else. but then the number of them move out and move to St. Lucia. I mean, I know people in St. Lucia have who have informed me of a significant increase in, in the offshore sector where St. Lucia is concerned. And well, a number th th people... this is not the same thing I'm talking about. The off the, the like the um but the people call these offshore businesses where um started with Tom Adams, where he invited well, he made the, the environment more conducive for people to register businesses in Barbados, they had offices and stuff, and they're paying Barbados taxes as opposed to be paying taxes in the jurisdiction where they're actually doing the work or, or where they were previously registered because the taxes in Barbados was low for them. And over the years, they've been saying that Barbados is, I can't remember the name, they call them now, um, but they try to discourage these people by, by, by changing the laws in their countries to stop businesses from registering in Barbados. But even so, um, Barbados has become unpopular as a destination because we have not been developing the offshore sector as fast. So other countries now have that that, that would that would that were not in the market came into the market and they're not doing better than Barbados. The, the the thing that I was talking about earlier is um of these um like Teddy marketers, Teddy whatever else. You you call the you have a a, um, a, a warranty with your um product, you call in the Barbados and complain about something that's that you bought in the States and you tend to fix it for them. It is cheap for those people because if they have to use United States labor, they won't be able to afford it. So they bring it down here and pay people pittance. So there are two aspects of that. One is to drive to, um, drive employment. A lot of these offshore businesses that you were talking about earlier, they don't have any, a lot of employees if, in Barbados at all. They just rent office space and got a chair and sit there on the computer and they might go to Barbados director to make it look good. But they don't really do any business in Barbados. But we get we get taxes for learning residents here. We did the same thing with um 
ships. We had we get ships. Ship uh, registry. And Barbados. Barbados. We got a yeah. ship registry. And um, that's how come you hear a Barbados ship get attacked. And, yeah, um, I was, uh, yeah. The, the, the Houthis or the Houthis, what we call them. Yeah, I was because in, I was in that ship, yeah. the ship never passed anywhere near Barbados. It is not, the body on it, even, don't even got Barbados, a Belgian cook, a, um, a, a fellow who scrapped, swapped down the deck. They got the body Belgian on it. It is just that they're registered in Barbados, a, a flag of convenience, if you wish. But and, but it is cheaper to register in Barbados than the, the, the port that you were probably in before. That's all it's about. But those those are like like parasitic industries, as opposed to developing manufacturing, or um, the service the other services where you would be selling your services out there. We can we can we can get into the market and provide accountants. We can provide doctors. We can provide anything. Yeah, yeah. But, but tell me something. Robotics, you name it. But we are not developing these things. But tell me something, you know, I mean, since we're on the old subject here of economics and the economy of the country, I observe that the prime minister signed uh, a loan today. Another I think one? it was today. Yeah, a, a loan from the, from the Afri Exim Bank for Kensington. $50 million. Now, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that when these loans are signed, they're using U.S. dollar figures. I, I stand to be corrected, but I would assume that the, the figure being quoted is U.S. dollars because I don't know, I don't know that um, institutions dealing with us in, on an international level use Barbados references, Barbados dollar references. However, I, um, I stand to be corrected, but $50 million for the refurbishing of Kensington Oval, and I and I, I, I touched on this at, at the beginning. Um, you know, I I and and we have we have a hospital that is in is a state of affairs, and it would appear to me that that um, World Cup cricket is more important than the lives of Barbadian people. You are not familiar with this. Uh, oh my dear, no. you, you know, I just saw. Okay, thanks. Twenty-five million US. I just saw somebody come in the back, in the in through the back there just now, and I believe we should we should invite her onto the platform right away because boy, have we missed her, Caswell? I don't know about you, but I miss <laughs> I miss Marcia on the show. Everybody it, miss Marcia. Marcia is. I'm sorry. I you know I thank you for the opportunity to host, but it's just not the same. I can't. I can't get that aura. <laughs> well, she she she's one of a kind, so you you could you could imitate. Uh, I don't try. Even, but I you're not going to achieve. <laughs> I can try, but I can tell you, I, I don't know I can achieve any of that. Marcia, mm -hmm. it's so good to welcome you back to your show. We know that you have been busy over the past week and a little bit more with that tremendous production that yes, we were you. privileged to watch over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday at the Combra Mayor Hall. So it's really great to have you back. I don't know if you'd just like to share for a couple of minutes with regards to how the sh production went before you actually get into anything that we're talking about. But it's your show, ma'am. <laughs> you, well, you, know, you, you host. Know, it, it, it's great. It's great. It's really great to be back. I miss, I really, really miss everybody. I miss everybody. Yes. Um, you know, miss, I miss the, the, the panelists and I miss, um, you know all of the the viewers and um you know but the the show we were doing um was for the young people for families and young people and um up to today people kept calling me to say how they were touched or they learned something i guess i'm always educating um they learned yeah. something from the show this is a speak live show that was held at combo mayor school and so um, I want to thank everybody for the support. We had pack houses um, each night. Yes, yes. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yes. And, and uh, we would not say publicly how many persons we had in those. <laughs> come up here. But um, we want to thank everybody who came out and all the support that it was given. 
and yes. from all reports people seem to um you know they are like the show they were tremendously uh, blessed by the show but i want to thank you dr ferdinand for doing such a tremendous job i'm hearing of the of what you've been doing and everybody seems to believe and I'm, I'm not surprised of the great job that you're doing <laughs> of the show and, I am um, almost tempted to, to mimic the words of a famous preacher in Barbados. This is your humble servant, Winston J. Messiah. You remember him? Uh, like, right. Yes. Right. <laughs> you know, Marcia, I had a complaint for him, though. Yes. The complaint was that when Marcia, on the show, Marcia, this, this shout out the, 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 the guests, I mean, the, 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 the people in the audience. I hear do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 do it at the, I do it at the beginning, but... Um, but my voice is not like hers. That, that, that aura, that aura, yeah. Cass, but I can't I, mimic that. Only today, that was the compliment that I got for him. He said that Marcy would show up to people and say, this body with the next person, the thing, and he, he ain't doing none of that. <laughs> so, you know, you know I, I, so Marcy, everybody missed you. Oh, well, yes, thank you. everybody, thank you. everybody. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and incidentally, too, Marcia, we were asked, and I promised to do it to, tonight, we were asked to give tremendous kudos to your husband, Dave. Yes. Who does such yes. a tremendous job from the technical end in the back room, so to speak. Uh, yes. We were, we were, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so somebody, Tony Pryor says, don't forget to show appreciation to Dave Weeks. Who yes. Knows? Yes. Yes. No, I, was, I was busy <laughs> with the show. You know, I think the only night he did not um, work back because of what was happening at the hall. He was at the hall with me at that time. Um, was was last night, but he was he was logged on and telling me how great it's going, and and at the same time trying to help me at the at the hall. So um, kudos um, to Dave, and we always say thank you, Dave, for the work that you that you do. Um, Gelbin was at at the show as well. Um, and um, there's some of you who are at the show, at the live show. This is a live, yeah. it's a live show. Um, and I want to thank everybody. But um, let's get back to what we were talking about. I'm, I'm quite um, interested in that. Yeah, we were we were actually chatting about the the projections that the this chief economist uh, for the Caribbean area made, um, and and the the consistent decline that he's showing in terms of what the government is telling the people of Barbados. And he's speaking concerning the challenges. Uh, I had it up on the screen. Maybe I should put it back up that you can see it. Um, let me just see if I can, I can get this back up. And he's talking about the, the need after the, after the pandemic, the need for, he said, growth rates in the Caribbean, remember those of 2010. Mm -hmm. and reveals the region has failed to address persistent obstacles that have blocked its potential, including low education levels, poor infrastructure, high investment costs, which also fuel social discontent. And, and I thought this was an excellent uh, examination of our economy and our country because we are certainly facing some of these challenges as a result of what I would call very poor planning. And we were expressing the concern that Barbados is not generating revenue, that we continue to, uh, you know, borrow money. We were just touching on the one to do with Kensington Oval when you joined us. And I was about to ask Caswell about his thoughts with regards to the loan that we're getting for the, for the uh, World Cup 2024. Yeah, but Freddie, to, to answer that, I would want to go back to 2007. Because Kensington had a makeover uh -huh. in 2007. 2007 right. is not um, ancient history. So what damage could have happened or what deterioration could have happened in, in, um, in that short space of time that you need $50 million to rectify? Uh, there want to be some serious vandalism going on at Kensington that you would need to, to that this kind of work. Somebody needs to explain what this money is going into. What, 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 what we are spending this money on? You know, or was the work in 2007 that bad uh -huh. that we need now to 
to fix it, to, to, um, to go over and do over. Um, Fifty million dollars is not is is is, is, not, is not chicken feed. So we need an explanation. The people of this country need an explanation. They need to tell us, look, we went in and we found that we had to do A, B, and C. You know, because the grounds, I, I don't know if the grounds were destroyed to the extent that you got to go and redo them. I, I do not understand. I really don't understand. This one baffles me. $50 million, 50 million Barbados dollars, I, I'm, I'm seeing from the, 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 the um, thing that we yeah, got Yeah, it's here. 35 million US. Right. Um, could be spent to provide... As, as you said, Freddie, capacity at the hospital. And you know, you know, because what you're doing at the hospital, you're importing white foreigners to, to um to run it. But if you don't, but you have to give it, give them um money mm -hmm. to do the things that you need to do at the hospital. Because what has been happening over the years, I remember when we had um Millington, Miss Didier, and I think it was Sandy for it, those three people to run the hospital. But they didn't have the resources. Now you, you you have a situation where you put all a lot of more people on top of them, uh, uh, what, what you had. But you're not getting the same type of results that they were they were they were producing. So it, it, I don't think it is just manpower that you need. It is supplies. I remember some years ago that um. They were trying to cut back on and get, and get injection needles and stuff from other places, and the, the injection needles were so hard to get it back. Said so it wasn't funny; they were dull. They go and and, and the, the source, the source, this this cheap stuff. So then they got to a lot of it, and then there's, and then there's rampant stealing at the hospital too. But we can get to that another night, you know. We we don't have we we have consultants that don't consult. We got I remember. Going to the hospital with a relative, and while they was there, some person came in, and he, they only had junior doctors at the hospital that time in the night. Only junior doctors, so they had to get a consultant because this person was was really serious. And the consultant came down. He didn't even change his pajamas. He put on the pants over the pajamas. You can see that he, you know, he got to his bed, put on the pants, but don't take off his pajamas, and he ran right down to the hospital with his bed. But he's being paid. I so see someone, the, yeah, I see someone is mentioning something here about the 25 million was pre previously explained. The greater portion goes toward replacement of floodlights and grounds. But this is the problem I have. We do not get a comprehensive breakdown of these loans. How much is going to this? How much is going to that? It's the same approach that was given during the estimates when you take into consideration um, the 188 million you will remember going toward the prime minister's office and the minister of state and minister in uh in, in uh, of state in the ministry of finance mr mr ryan Th ryan strong i think it was got up and he talked about um you know all these things that are being covered but what we don't know is how much is going towards x how much is going towards y how much is going towards z who is getting the contracts uh, you know these are the things that we we are not hearing we are not hearing those details and, and people want to know. People want to know: uh, Is the ordinary Barbadian benefiting from this fifty million dollar loan? What's happening? Um, and uh, um, Mr. Franklin, we're hearing some noise coming through. Um, coming through your your microphone, I guess, in your environment. Um, yes, um, you know, some, somebody's here saying, you know, if it's $25 million in floodlights, because I, I remember when they were doing, uh, getting ready for the, um, the, the last, the, the, the previous world cup that a whole lot of money was spent on, on Kensington. And yeah. my understanding, um, is that that money was not, um, recouped that, that we did not make any profit. We did not make anything of Kensington. And for the most part, Kensington sits there. Um, you know, it's not it's not like we use it a lot. You know, there are so many rooms that's their conference rooms that's in Kensington. We have not we don't really use that that facility. 
the, you know, I, I remember at one point there was an employee who stole out all of the the the, um, the TVs out of the um, out of Kensington, and that's a fact because I had an office up there, so I, I know that as a fact. So so you wonder what why are we why are we even embarking on this again? And and if is this really true that it's floodlights and grounds, uh, Mr. Franklin? Um, let's see if we can hear you now. Um, I I don't know. See, government has a, a system tried and tested, we call it estimates, where people sit down and they go down to the, the last dollar, identifying what you will spend and who and what you will spend it on. And they go through a process in the House of Assembly every year. And, and, and if you look through the estimates, they will tell you what they're buying, how they're buying it, what they're using the money for. So the, 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 the information that Freddie is asking for is not uncommon it is it is par for the course exactly. in public service exactly. even at the statutory boards in order to get money from the government because some statutory boards have to get money from central government they have to sell it to the government we're going to be buying six of these two of these one of these and we are paying so much and so much national insurance in order to get money so it is not far fetch or to ask these questions because it is the way government does business. So if you don't provide this, it's because you don't want to provide it because you got something to hide. It is, it is as simple as that. Government is is used to to doing things as the way for the acts for them. That this big book that you see me pull up, I was off of anything. Look through there, and you can you can see down to the penny how government is going to spend money. So when you're going to spend it on Kensington, why are you not going through the same process, finding uh -huh. out how much things cost, and and, and you can tell me about mostly for lights and grounds. Tell me how much grounds will be. Tell me how many floodlights you want, exactly. and if so much we're renting for Carl Williams or something, so do something. But um, Kader, you don't spend that type of money when. You have to go out to the defense force and borrow um, equipment to use in the hospital because the hospital, the defense force got it, and the defense force, the defense force have equipment in the hospital and got none. Buy something the hospital because I am sure that the defense force ain't gonna need it as much as the hospital. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody can challenge that. But you see, that is the problem that we have where the government is concerned. The government is not giving us a clean and clear explanations for all of these monies borrowed. And I keep repeating the fact, terms and conditions and break down how it's spent. How much money has Carl Williams received for the mill and pave? How much money has Mr. Ch Mr. Cherry received for the mills and pave? pave? How much money? That is what I want to see. And I have a right to ask for it, Caswell, because as a citizen, my taxes are going to be going to pay these loans. That is that is my right. And the government is my employee, not, not my lords. They are my servants. It's an oath they took at the president's house to serve. And so they have a responsibility to give an account and answer my questions. That's not a partisan matter. That is not a matter of DLPB. I don't care who is in office. You're using my money. I mean, let's face it, you know, even inside of our families, Caswell, um, our wives, our husbands, our children, when they utilize our funds, uh, you know, if it's not theirs, we ask, you know, what did you spend? The, I gave you $100 yesterday. What did you spend it on? Uh, I spent it on 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 Shafet. I said, how much you spent on Shafet? How much you spent on bus? And you got to be able to answer my questions. You know, but um, we elect overlords. In the system of government, uh, governance that we have, we elect people who all of a sudden they become more powerful and more important than anybody who put them there to, to manage our affairs. And they reach a stage where they don't, have, where they feel that they don't have to report to us, they don't have to account to us. You can look at the legislation. Marcy wasn't on yet when it was mentioning the, the, the things with the national, the pensions and national insurance that we were talking about. And when we first started out, this this round, 
the people are not finding out that they lose, they're missing some money from the PayPal. But my said they were watching these those people not watching the show. They were calling me today, asking, mm -hmm. Yes, Casper, well, you aware that this thing happening? I said, Yes, I know it's been happening because, but this is something that we draw to your attention. Mind you, government doesn't draw it to their attention, they sure did. And if they sure didn't bring it to their attention, people would not have noticed. Yes. Mind you, they slipped it in along with the national insurance amendments. So people were more concerned about the national insurance. And they were, um, so the only thing that they were heard, they were hearing was that the retirement age going up to 68. And um, that's the only thing that bothered them. Mm. And that mm -hmm. you got to, yeah. um, you can get less money, but it doesn't bother a lot of people because it, 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 I don't think it, it, it was bothering people at that time. It's bothering them now. But you know, you know, Marcia, I have been watching some of the some of the matches overseas, even some of the test matches, and I'm seeing um, empty stands. Except you're down in a place like like India or you know those countries that people are just fanatical when it comes to cricket. You know, West Indians have lost a lot of interest in cricket because our team has done poorly over the years. And my question really is, how are we going to how are we going to recoup? enough revenues from the attendance and I, I it's not that i'm praying that it's not good i'm praying that it is it is it is overwhelming but i i hope on the on the basis of what i think you expressed that we'd never recouped what was spent in 2007 here we now add an additional 50 million dollars to it and in the face and i'm sure you all have seen it if you watch the 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 uh, the only cricket that is really uh, getting massive attendances over in, in, is the Indian Premier League, the IPL. But if you watch the matches with Pakistan versus India, you watch matches with Australia versus uh, New Zealand, and you look at the stands, the stands are predominantly empty. And yeah. I just wonder what's going to be happening here in terms of the 50 million we've spent. How much of that are we going to recoup? I hope we recoup a lot of it. I really do. Yeah. Um, Adrian Hines is saying here that 25 million, hi Adrian, um, 25 million US dollars will be split. Only 12.5 million um, of it will be used to develop the oval. Um, so um, I didn't see that, that bit I, in, I, the, in the nation. I'll take a um, search for it now that we're on. Yes, um, I'll do, I do likewise. Yeah, Adrian, can you tell us what, um, what you, whatever you've read, can you tell us where the other, um, the other 50, the other 25 will be spent? So the 50, 50 million uh, Barbados, 25 million um, um, spent at the overall, and then what, what's the other 25 million to be spent on? Yeah, and, and when he says to redevelop the oval, can we, did they indicate how that, you know, what are the details of that redevelopment? Is it going to be additional stands? Is it going to be a, a, a upgraded playing ground, you know, because they got the artificial turf you can lay out now? Uh, I heard somebody mention about lights. Are they going to be improving in terms of the uh, of the um, the facilities for, for food and the how is that 12.5 million for redeveloping the oval i'd like to know how that's going to be spent what is going into that and then of course what is going into the other 12.5 million it's a lot of money it's a lot of money and they owe it to the people of barbados to tell us the details and you know what they say marcia the devil is in the details uh -huh. and, and, and so i want to know uh, i'm sorry someone is saying yes, here, no, no, fine. Um, that the rest is to develop cricket in Barbados. Mm -hmm. That is that that as an accountant, you hear that that's very wide and very vague. Yes, yeah. I think at this yes. stage of the game, that it is important that there is a breakdown. It's a lot of money, and yes. we are hearing lots of millions. We just spent thirty million in three weeks. Thirty million dollars in three weeks, and from my memory, and we are fixing the roads. The roads are important to be fixed. But as um, um Dr. Perdin what, what was saying, it's a breakdown of things. And now we're we're it's another fifty million and okay, twenty-five million um on the the oval itself, and then the other twenty-five million to develop cricket how. Yes, we that's my question immediately question going now. through my mind. 
I agree with you, Marcy. The first thing I thought of the rest is the development of cricket. I'm asking how are they going to be building cricket uh, stadiums around Barbados? You know, I'm not meaning I'm not talking about big stadiums, you know, cricket facilities where uh, our young people can be can be schooled and trained in cricket. How are they going to do that? I agree with you. You yeah. said the uh, Adrian says that according to the article, the other half will go to building uh, to building um, that solid platform for the redevelopment of our cricket. But again, that is a very wide statement, and I'm just I'm I am really interested in knowing. Okay, that's fine. I hear you. I have no problems with that. But at the same time, how what is that? How is that going to be uh, you know out, laid out? I, I I really want to know. Um, Ryan Brathwaite is here. Ryan Brathwaite, that's the famous Ryan Brathwaite, um, um, who won that gold medal for Barbados. Mm -hmm. um, he's saying there's no direction for sports in Barbados at this moment. And mm -hmm. that's that's a part of the whole thing. When you there's no vision, you know, um, Mr. Franklin, there's no vision of where we're going with sports. So it's, it's like we're picking up money and just throwing at things. We have a stadium there where our young people... Um, they went to Carifta and they could they didn't do well at Carifta. And it's not because Barbadians don't have the ability. I sat oh, and no. watched I watched Barbadians running past Jamaicans at last Carifta in the eight hundred meter, four hundred meters race. So it's not that Barbadians don't have the ability, but it's the training. If they do yes. not have a, have the training facility, how do we expect them to do well at Carifta? They went and, and, and they, they did poorly. And when we come back and they say we, they did poorly, why? Why? You know, and as, um, as he's saying that there's no, no, there's, we, we have no vision for sports. But we're going to take up another, this 25 million and we're going to throw it at cricket. Let's see some structure. Let's see some plan, plans. Let's see what you have in place. Let's give it in the short term and the long, the, 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 the long term and the short term. What are the goals? What are the objectives of, of how we're going to develop um, cricket? I think I see Mr. Rainey is saying, Rainey is saying, use some of the money to fix Leicester Vaughan School, which would be a good idea because I'll tell you, it is not fixed. The problem is, let, let me explain. The system that we have there is basically accrued by a digester. All right? You know, when people have a, a digester, you put fecal matter in the digester and the stuff inside there generate fuel. And you can cook with it, you can generate electricity with it, whatever. The gases that come off, methane, mm -hmm. you can burn, whatever. But last of all, school was closed for five weeks. So no, no um, fecal matter was getting into the digester to generate any 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 gas so they would say oh nothing coming off no because nothing wasn't coming off because you were not introducing any new material into the system mm -hmm. and that is the problem and we have a, we have tricked the staff we have tricked the the um the parents by telling them oh no the fumes are coming off well if you um put the, the fecal matter in there's another word for fecal matter but i think they were telling us that and you don't, and it use up, it, it can't generate methane, add infinitum, you got to add in some more. So when when, when that stop producing the amount of methane, because it is, it is not going to work forever. So you got to keep putting in some, you got to keep putting in. But the children using the bathrooms, that was the physical matter that was going in. Hmm. But schools closed, nobody using the toilets, nothing was getting into the system. To generate that methane, so as soon because this they, and they checked the well covers, and they said that nothing was coming out from the well covers, but it was not only the well covers that were leaking. And if you look at the report, the report tells that they seal the wells. They want to seal the wells, and they tell you what to do there. Mm -hmm. So, Vinny, you're absolutely right. They should use some of that money to fix that the one school because they are going to put those students knowingly. In harm's way again, because they know that it is not fixed. They, they know they know very well it is not fixed. It it, it only appeared because nothing was there to, coming up. 
because the, nobody was using the system. So we need to spend money where it matters. Fairly identify the hospital there. Now, Benny is is, um, is is suggesting less of one school, mm -hmm. and they can find a lot of a lot of other places that you can spend money uh, productively. Because you know, I um I don't know much about the television rights and stuff, but I remember the World Cup. If not, I remember the World Cup that when um when the West Indies won and Mabel was the best one watching it Saturday. You know, <laughs> maybe we could get some television rights too, so to generate some money. I don't know what happens. I don't understand it myself. But um, okay, cricket. They're trying to revive it. I don't think cricket will ever reach the stage where it was when I was a boy, because everybody but me played cricket. I um, I I was not good with the bat. I could have bought a few balls and things, but then um, the I remember playing cricket and they, they had something called a rubber line comper. You remember them, Freddie? Mm -hmm. And those balls, mm -hmm. man, and, and mine made three. And they stopped playing cricket there and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I, I played, I played, I continued to, I didn't get into the, into the big arenas, you know, but I, I enjoy it. And I must tell you that you know, I am not against it, Mar and Marcy, I don't think that we're necessarily against it. All we're asking for, and, and you know, it appears that whenever you ask a question of the government in this country, it is a partisan issue. And, and you know, it becomes really disgusting when you are seeking authentic responses and answers to questions uh, that we deserve to ask. Because the reason we're asking, Marcy, is because we don't know. I mean, I, I understand, yeah, half of it is going toward this, half is going toward that. But I have I have learned down through the years to, to, to look at how it is spent. You know, if I go into a business, I mean, Marcy, you run a business. You have to look at the details of your business, how much money you spend in electricity, how much money you spend in water, how much money you spend in transportation and fuel, etc., so that you're able to balance your budget. You're an accountant. I'm not an expert in finance, but it's common sense to me. And so I am asking, okay, out of the 25 million, how much is being spent, for example, refurbishing the, 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 the uh, what you call them, the stands? It, how much is being spent there? How much is being spent in terms of the lighting? You know, that's all we're saying. Give us a breakdown. Give us a yeah. breakdown. Yeah. yeah. They don't think we deserve it. Yeah. But that's the problem. They feel that they are our masters and whatever they do is well done. No, it is not well done. We need to know because... We might be paying twice or three times, you know, and um, or, or in another place we can spend some of that money. It's to buy food for prisoners at um, Dodd's prison. A day last week, they had no food for, for certain sections of the prison because some people who can't eat pasta didn't have any food. There was no yam in the street, but there was nothing like that at all. Mm -hmm. And people did not, some people did not get anything to eat. And so yeah. the government should really can't because I I I I'll say this now because we don't want to talk about it tonight, but it is cruel and inhuman punishment, which is contrary to our law, to to, to put a father in prison and don't feed him. That's cruel and unusual. And a a a, a fellow that and then getting fed, fed should really get contact with his lawyer and get a constitutional motion against the guy because you cannot have. People building house out of the prison, people um more prison food as being used outside of the prison than in the prison. Men can't get meat on their food. You know, sometimes you, you know they give you juice or something like this. You can't get juice in the you know, and um it is heart wrenching for people to be here that their their um children, yeah, because you know, I don't care how bad a fella is, he's mommy's boy. And no mother wants to know that her child is being um, starved in prison. A couple of few years ago, it was so bad that um, they had um, scurvy in the prison. Pr prisoners teeth fall out because they weren't getting um, a little lemonade. Because that's all that would fix it, you know. Because scurvy is the lack of, of vitamin C. Yeah. And all you needed was a little um, lime juice. And that would have fixed you. No, they might have yeah. that. 
You know, so we, we, yeah. the government needs to come out there and air bombs need to come and tell the people the truth about what is going on in the prison. I remember yeah. some time ago when the officers up there, they didn't have any um, fats or flour to make bread. You know, if you don't get the bread, in fact, it might have been a wreck. That lady went into her pocket and sat up there and buy um, fats and to make salt bread. And um, eventually she got it back, but that's after they started making some noise. Mm -hmm. Because, because she, she, she was conscientious enough to, to say, but look, we're going to go to ride and hear us over the weekend and when the big boys are home. Well, you know, Morris, one, one uh, final comment I'd like to make on this matter is what is the interest rate on this loan? Because I understand from some people, I see Key Mars coming in, but I understand, I think it was Key Mar that referenced some months ago that the interest rate on these loans is actually quite high. And I see no mention of the interest rate in terms of, of the article that has been carried. Um, you know, in, in, carry, where is it? This is the, the nation, uh, I, I believe. I stand to be corrected, but I see no reference to the interest rates. Yeah, but someone no. says it's a it's a very um very very good uh, a very good question, but um and I don't know Kimar might be able to answer that when he comes in, but I, yeah, just, I, I also yes. want him to answer if he went to River Bay because a man told my office today to tell me that there are uh, 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 this um seaweed harvester um rotting at River Bay too, so I know if Kimar went down, you know he's the yeah. sleuth. The Sherlock. <laughs> Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. But before Kimar, before he comes in, I want to just, um, I said something that was, um, I, I don't think people understood what I was speak, was saying. I was speaking about athletics and that our um, young people, our Bajan young people who um, have the innate talent um, for athletics, mm -hmm. that's my belief because I've seen it in operation. They, those students were not, those young people were not prepared. I was speaking of the swimmers. Um, the swimmers, I'm told that they won 37 medals. And I remember I was speaking with one of the coaches and asked if they could, you know, get some of the um, them to come on to the show. So I'm very aware that the swimmers did well. Um, and they did well. They, they, it didn't just happen that they did well. They have somewhere to train. And so that's the point I'm making that are athletes, they don't have the, the training facilities. Um, they have the ability, but without the facilities, then they're not going to be able to operate at their optimum. And, yes, and that's, yes. that's what I'm saying. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, welcome, Mr. Uh, Kimar Stewart. Uh, so good to have you on tonight, sir. Um, a pleasure to welcome this young on upcoming uh barbadian leader and Sloof. i don't say that lightly i don't say that lightly and also um our current sherlock holmes uh, <laughs> in, in our current sherlock holmes in terms of investigating uh, i don't know that there's any other person in the country that does it quite as well as you do mr stewart welcome to the marcio week show sir it's a pleasure to have you joining us tonight where he leads others follow and they do <laughs> and they do videos after him too yes, you know? <laughs> yes. yes marcia we were saying the other night while you were off of the program doing your production that caswell myself none of us have been able to get ministers to come out and follow us when we make a statement a comment only kimar has been able to get that done <laughs> Good evening, sir. Welcome to the show. God bless you. Welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. I think he's having some challenges there. We're not hearing him. Good night, Kimar. Can you hear us? He's stuck. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you? Yeah, but, but, but keep, keep talking. Keep talking. We, we can hear you, but it sounds like you're having is a no. uh, internet issue. To me. You, you might have to turn off the camera. Keep, um, keep on. Right, just give me one moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, while he's, while yeah. he's, um, uh, yes, while he's sorting that out, um, I, I sent you, uh, I sent in a flyer. 
um, a save the date flyer um, of an event that is coming up by uh, being put on by Ross Simba. And it's elevating, it's by the African Heritage Foundation, elevating, creating cannabis culture, a people's movement. And that is going to be on April the 20th at Freedom Park at 5 p.m. Right? right. And I, it's a, yes, yes. No, I was just wondering if Dave could bring that up because for some reason when I do, it blocks out all of you guys. But when Dave does, he gets it next to you. So, okay. I, I'm, yeah, I'm just yeah. wondering if he could so do that. It, it, it would, there you go. You. Thank you. Um, it's an educational forum to foster a diverse and respectful cannabis culture in Barbados. So it's a, an educational forum um, that is being put on by the African Heritage Foundation. And I think that it's important because um, a lot of us, we don't understand um, the, the true value of that plant. And the plant has been abused and misused and misunderstood, you know. And I think that um, a forum like this um, is a very, very, uh, very important. Uh, you know, I want to definitely be there um, next Saturday, April 20th, because I want to learn more about the plant. They're going to talk about the cultural recognition and respect and preservation of traditional knowledge, reparative justice and economic empowerment. They're going to speak about that, which is important, especially for the Rastafari community, um, who a lot of them, they still have, um, you know, um, it's unjust because they still have, um, you know, what you call that uh, on their, um, they went to, they, they, they were, in, some of them in prison, records that I'm saying, I'm sorry, they still have those records there that have not, the records have not been um, impunged. What's the right word? Is it expunged. Expunged. expunged? expunged, expunged, yes, right? So, um, that's that's important. Um, community development and poverty alleviation, health and wellness, legal protections, support and constitutional compliance, promoting equal rights and religious freedom, which is important. I often say, you know, um, if the Rastafari, if they're using it in their religious um, ceremonies that they should be given that right to it. There are some churches that use alcohol, you know, um, within their within their church services. And, and um, you know, um, there was a time where, where that was prohibited. <laughs> you know, no, that is not prohibited. So it is part of, uh, if it's part of their ceremony, I think that it's important. I, for sure, am going to be there supporting the community. It's April 20th, 2024 right there at Freedom Park at 5 p.m. and just come out. Um, Rasimba was supposed to come on to speak more about this and ask your questions, you know, and let's 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 have a good discussion um, um, there uh, as well. We're still waiting on Kimar. Yes, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him come back in as yet. Um, while we do that, the cybercrime um, bill, um, they're seeking submissions. I don't know if we went through that already. Do, not, not, as, not as yet. We did touch on it last night. But again, yeah. I don't know if uh, Dave has that because I had really some major problems getting it enlarged and big enough that people could read it. But I did go through the list of the of the uh, uh, persons on the on the panel, on the committee. Um, of course, uh, my good friend Caswell was vehemently um, uh, on accommodating in terms of facilitating, but I think we've been able to convince him to submit that position to the committee so that they hear the dissenting voices in a number of different ways. And we really want to encourage all of you that are with us on the show and those that you may know to submit in your writing. Uh, I think they're also facilitating um, appearances and so on before the committee. So we want to encourage you all to put feet to your your you know your mouth so to speak, and uh, yeah. and turn up and, and write. Yeah. Before yeah. before you go, um, Mr. Franklin, I want to say to um Barbadians who are listening, there are um almost thirteen hundred of you on that um this is important because we have been marching about this, and this is where um we need to flood this um commission with submissions. Okay. 
And there's yes. a date that is there. Um, what is the date? Um, can you remind April the 26th, I believe, April is the, the date. April the 26th, which, yes. which um, means that it's about 11 days um, from now that um, we can get the submissions in. Let's do that. And let's, yes, flood, yes. let's flood the commission with submissions. Remember that people like myself would be facing seven years in jail um, or any of us here if this cyber crime bill goes it goes through. So wh whether we whatever we believe about the people who are on the, on the in, uh, you know on the committee or whatever, let's do the part that we we know we can do. Yes. Yes. And you know, uh, last, you know, last, um, last night. Last night, when I was uh, explaining to the others, and I think I it, owe oh, you didn't, enough to explain it to you, that the bill was passed in the in the house, in the lower house. Yes. Nobody on the lower in the lower house should be able to reflect on that bill. That is contrary to the standing orders of the lower house. So, how can the Senate then establish a, a joint committee? Because they, they won't be able to have members from the lower house in it. Because they have already spoken and they have decided, decided, well, this is the bill that we want passed. What the Senate must do, according to the rules, is to examine the bill. If they want to take it to committee, it has to be a committee of the Senate. And mm -hmm. then the Senate would then say, well, look, you know, we've had a committee. We um, rec recognize that there are some... It is, it is lacking, and we are sending it back to the house for the house to um because you will send back what suggestions that you have. No person in the from the house should be on that committee because they are already convinced what they have done is correct, mm -hmm. or not. It wouldn't have been passed in the house, and it it, it is so. I'm I, my my what I eventually yes think I will do because I think Maxine and Ferdy were able to. Change my mind. That is not an easy thing. And to, <laughs> <laughs> to change to change my position, because I I I I I'm still firm in, the, in my belief that what they're doing is absolutely contrary to the standing orders of the House and the standing orders of the Senate. And um, in order to for the Senate to hear that, I mean for the House to hear it. The House will have to reflect on a bill that has already been passed in this session. It is contrary to the rules to pass a bill and then come back and pass essentially the same bill a second time in the same session. So the Senate should not be, the, the, the House should not be in there. It is the Senate that has problems with it, but unfortunately, what has happened, the Prime Minister with this cat kind of shot kind of mentality that she has, that every time she hears something, that she has to try to give it a, 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 um, to, to some sort of solution to make herself look good. So what we were saying that this is, oh, we're going to go to a, a joint committee. The stage for a joint committee has been passed. You know, mind you, I think she should, instead of leaving the other thing, she, I understand somebody just sent me an email to them, a WhatsApp to me, she ain't here, that she left the island today or something like that. So um, she should spend some time when she's traveling to really stand in orders with the, the house, at least the house. Yeah. She's been in the house for over 30 years, though. So she should know the rules, and you just can't come and do it as you like. Put and you know, just you know, that's 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 what anarchy is all about. When you do things the way you want, despite the rules, we will yeah. end up in, in anarchy. And yeah. I am prepared to challenge them on it. Now that I, I, I said, Maxine and Freddie convinced me. Yes. And I, and I and I I think I will sit down over the weekend, and it was I make that it's going to be a very short submission. Because it, it isn't a lot that you can think other than show them what they, what the rules what their rules are. Yeah. Well, I mean, as you said, I think that is the right thing to do. And for the rest of us, um, I think we we need to. As somebody said, you know, they should have over eight thousand complaints on the first day. This is something I think that Bajans, um, you know, we we've worked hard. Um, you know, we've worked hard, and we're at this juncture, and everybody should get involved. Um, Kimar is here, um, Dr. Ferdinand. Um, Kimar, let's see if we can hear you now. All right, Sherlock. Yes, General. <laughs> yes, we are hearing you loud and clear. Loud and clear. Yes. Yes, yes. Good night like to Pastor Ferdinand, the star host of the evening. Good night like to Marcia. 
And then like the Star Wars is memory. over on the other yeah. side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad to see you guys yet again. Um, you guys are behaving like Ronald Jones now, you know, Ronald Jones. Oh. Just, <laughs> I, I, heard, like, I heard I heard some <laughs> I heard some references to somebody's name. I, I felt so good to hear it and to hear the comments that were made. I I felt so proud of you. And I felt so proud to be involved in anything with you. I tell you, thank you. Really, I felt very, very proud when I heard your name called quite a few times. Quite a few times. Yeah, well, I was glad as well, too. So I... Um, <laughs> Well, I said I enjoy myself. I couldn't make it on the show yesterday. I was trying my best, but um, the time didn't permit. But nevertheless, um, I am here today. Um, unfortunately, though, <laughs> I come to you with another sorry or sorry statement, rather, about manipulation, misappropriation, and again, just Blatant lying, just just outright lies again, again, again. <clears throat> <All> right. <laughs> anyway, I see some comments here. Um, thank you guys for watching last night, Joseph Saint Chad. Yes, out uh, there like the seven thousand five hundred um <laughs> people who were there, <laughs> and they said good night. So, to them all. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> but today, Caswell, uh -huh. I went again to St. John Barbados, right? And on this show, I raised it the other day and somebody texted to Caswell to back up what he was saying. <clears throat> and I went to Port House in St. John today, right? So you guys can remember that I would have raised the fact that the government half do the road at Port House. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. No. It, it gets worse than that, you know. They just half do the road. They put down the road without drains, by the way. So when the water washed down off the hill, the water just washing into everybody house, into everybody property, right? So the road is built in a way that it just allows the water to slush right down it, not a drain, not anything, flooding not people house. They have do it through the hill so only the, the, the first set of people and i'm going to show you some footage and some videos to understand uh completely what i'm saying but they have to the road the road stretches halfway through part house and, and then another kilometer long it, it it is not done right so what they did exactly right was to bring the road to a certain point, abandon it. And if you see the state of the rest of that road, you will cry. And the fact is that the government of Barbados got two loans, not one, you know, two loans to fix Port House specifically. And Port House in them. But I can remember the pictures that were online circulating, right? Where Charles Griffith, the, the, the minister for, for St. John, he went up there posing next to the road and said, oh, I, I, the government built potholes, the government did potholes. The government paved from the top of potholes and they paved the first quarter going down and they paved the road without drains. Mm. Right? <coughs> but I want you to watch my video and you will see very interestingly why and who was speaking about drains in my video? I let her come and say to Barbadians, way right after she stood up right here at Port House, this is the Prime Minister stood up at Port House and say that the Latin America can't give them the money, but you can't build it if you don't put on the drainage. She said that. And then when I went there, the road is done without drainage. Right, but I'm gonna let you watch the video. So you can go ahead, tech man. <laughs> and I am standing at Pothouse in St. John. 
couple years ago, the Prime Minister of this country, Mia Motley, stood at this exact spot and said to the people of Port House and to Barbados that the Latin American Development Bank loaned the government of Barbados money specifically to fix the entire Port House road. Only culverts, and instead of just reinstatement of the road, because of the state of the erosion now, it has to be fully rebuilt. Luckily for us, it was part of the CAP program. And therefore, in other words, we had funding from the Latin American Development Bank for it. So what we're going to do is bring it forward and be able to deal with it, but it can't deal with it unless we deal with the drainage the same thing. Next because step. of the scale of... It was also said in election year, January 2022, by the representative for this constituency, Charles Griffith, that the Chinese loan the government of Barbados money to rehabilitate the Scotland district and roads inclusive of Port House would have been finished based off the two law facilities that the government of Barbados received to fix Port House Road. Now, I saw the clips, I saw the pictures, and the pictures according to the government insinuated that the entire road of Port House was done. Now, I walked this road from the top to the bottom and this road is half done. Now this road has no drains in it. So therefore, when the water floods off the hill, People's houses and galleries are being destroyed and their livelihoods are being destroyed based off the fact that the government of Barbados went ahead and half paved the road without putting the adequate drainage in place. Deal with it, but it can't deal with it unless we deal with the drainage the same thing. Next because of the scale of no, I'm just here to remind you, Barbadians, that we have a wastage of taxpayers' money going on. And the fact that we had two different law facilities to be able to do Paul's road and the road is half done. Okay, there's so many creators in our Paul, but the money allocated has been spent to fix this road. What the road has been half done. Well, the representatives and the Prime Minister came here and gave us misinformation that the entire road was done. I tell you, no, and the road has not been done. So I'm urging transparency. I'm urging also for the government to come out and fix the road completely. And I'm also urging for you to tell us how the monies have been spent to fix Port Holt Road. But Port Holt Road is half done. Thank you very much. Yes, so you guys saw what I'm speaking about, right? You guys saw what I'm speaking about, right? <laughs> who, who, mean... who, who did it? Who fixed that road? Infra. Oh, Lord. Wow. Wow. Right? I just want to show you guys my screen <clears throat> because you know how it goes. We, we have to put... <laughs> The evidence here to substantiate. But, but while you're said, doing that, go ahead, Kimar, go ahead. But as I said in my video, that our Prime Minister stood in the exact spot. And that is the same spot that I was standing in my video. All right? Can you see my screen? No, no. Um, no, not yet. Uh, let me see now. Yes, yes, I'm seeing it now. Yes, go ahead, right. Kimar. That, that is the same exact spot that I was standing at. Right. Now, there are people who live 
further down in potholes. I didn't even stretch the road to the end. Mm -hmm. Where close to where we're standing is where they cut off paving the road. So the people all down the hill, even the people who use pothole spring, they could tell you how horrible that road is. So they didn't even care for the people who live down the hill. Right? <clears throat> they paved it to the middle and everybody else to the bottom of well oh, oh, oh well. And the people who live at the top suffer every time the rain could fall because the road has no drains and you heard the prime minister in the video saying we can't do it unless you put in the drains so explain to me how they got permission to go ahead and build the road but you were having the proper drains after she stood up right here and said that right now i don't know if you heard what i heard two loans right you got a loan from the latin american development bank straight out of the prime minister's mouth and then you had another loan from the chinese at bank to fund the scotland district and charles griffith the mp for st john said that that would have completed the thing no the prime minister promised that that road that she was standing on and i can give you the date specifically now this was in december 2019 Mm. and she said within three months three months uh, let me read it for you it says here in two to three months the badly damaged road at pothole st john should be repaired <clears throat> the assurance came from prime minister mia motley who said that the repairs will form part of the road infrastructure program being funded through the latin american development bank but she noted that the original cost would have to be reversed because it will not have included the level of erosion that has occurred within the recent rains. So you, so you hear it already, right? She's saying that the costs have to go up already, right? Because there has some erosion, so therefore the money from CAF had to go up. Mm -hmm. So from ball one, Marcia. Yes. They, right? So three months, so let's count December 2019, January 2020, February, March, we have three months about 5,000 or 7,500 times <laughs> since 2019 December. But it is not finished, right? But she's saying that the money has to go up. And she said <clears throat> here, well, she on her visit to Pothouse in St. John, because she was standing there and you see the picture that I put up earlier. Yes. She said that the yeah, Motley told the media that the remedial work will start immediately as mtw has already been instructed to build the box drains and that work will continue to christmas right that, that was just the drainage work but the actual road i was told by president that infra built the road right which means that a contract was given to build the road but given the fact that there are no drains in the road what was the sense of going ahead marcia yes and building knowing that you didn't have to come and dig back up the road but i i think that it was purpose work because they know they have to dig back up that road to put in drains in it or or, or people's people are going to drown up there mm -hmm. so i think that they did it on purpose to be able to to, to, to spend money right? but Kimar, because, let me ask you a question yeah. i i wrote down here you talked about the drainage can you explain to the viewers um the kinds of challenges the people in that area in st john would encounter um when the rain falls um without the drainage hence why the prime minister was saying that the drainage needed to be done first can you explain to us what really happens um there in pothouse well the road obviously is a steep hill right okay. coming down um uh, and in that steep hill I'm going to try to get and in that steep hill the water would run off the hill uh, you know st john is a place that has a lot of water so it went mm -hmm. off the hill down into whatever water stream or tra trail that it encounters right <clears throat> now the road was eroded because mm -hmm. obviously water running on it constantly whatever and then the fact that it was very old it would deteriorate so what, you, what we needed to do was to dig 
drainage under the road so you know that there are these grills in the road that has the holes that you can almost stick your hand through them you know so this way you're walking mm-hmm. you, know, you hold that your foot don't go down through one of the drains and and right there, there are none of them in the road right so you were supposed to build some of these drains to take the water off the road to stop mm-hmm. the water from running down the hill because the road is built in a way and it's flush with the sidewalk so when the water runs down the hill the water would come off into people's garage galleries and some people's house are slightly below the cliff so the water actually runs right into your household wow and that that was not that was done that was supposed to be preliminary and that that was not done they went ahead and they they paved the roads i mean you know there's someone who keeps telling me something with this paving of the roads it just seems like laundering like something you know um something odd about it why would you spend all of that money you know and um you do part of the road three quarter of the road or half of the road and you didn't do what was so important to the people in the community which is that they wouldn't get flooded out in their homes you know kimar it's yes. just i just can't help but think about that yes but the reason they rushed forward to get it done was because the people exposed them it got put in the media that they, they weren't doing anything and the, the rule was just deplorable um in the interview the prime minister was saying that the people who have shops and stuff down the hill the trucks couldn't get down and, and, and they had to find a temporary solution to the thing which is which is commendable you, you try to find a solution but the fact is you rush ahead to try to just for the pr of it Mm. right knowing for well you had to take a time to fix the problem because if you had taken your time the people in potholes no water would not be eating up the houses right the people would not be drunk people could get out the house it was told to me that school children whenever the rain will fall and I walk up that hill this the shoes flooded with water right because St John primary school is right at the top of that hill and they just closed down St. John Primary School. So the children who live in Pothouse have to go all across the other side of St. John to be educated. Right? So the same way, Marcia, they were putting things in place to have the drainage and everything done. I think they could have done that as opposed to trying to get a warner on the people who exposed them. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and fix the, the problem properly and fix the entire road straight down to the spring because a lot of people use that spring a lot of tourists come here and go into pothole spring right and and they didn't even have the decency to push the road down that like even the people who live at the bottom could have enjoyed their money mm-hmm. right because two loans were taken up for the for one road right the road ain't dead, but the money the money gone right but i have another piece that i want to show you here and which yes. the residents in themselves the residents this thing came out and said that they hope the project will soon be completed this was after the event the first day mm-hmm. so i hoping you can see yes, my I'm screen seeing your, i'm seeing your screen yes yes so it is saying here Potholes residents, <laughs> these ads, St. Lucia Jazz Festival. <laughs> <laughs> Potholes residents, whole project will soon be completed. Right? And there's something about St. John and the word hope that doesn't go well. <laughs> but, <laughs> 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 but, but it is it's saying here. Pothouse residents hope project will soon be completed. Right? So then it is it's saying here now, let me scroll down. A road rehabilitation project that shall have only lasted about three months in a rural community. I remember the premise is the one who said three months, has now been on pause for the past year. And this article that I am reading was published in 2021 right 2021 and this is now 2024 right 
So, so they're saying here that well road works in Port House St. John was started at the end of 2019 with a promise from the Prime Minister that it would have been completed in about three months' time. Residents are yet to see this promise fulfilled. Work began with the laying out of the pipes, building fresh culverts and some patchwork, the sections of the road, and laying and rolling of marrow. However, the Latin American development project was forced to be placed on pause as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, which had started to affect the island in March 2020. When Air Barbados today team visited the area on Thursday to see how residents were coping with the present conditions, they said that they understood the reason behind the pause, but it, they insisted that it was still important for the road to be fixed. And residents have complained that the road in, Pothole, in the Pothole community has been in a terrible state for many years, but was made worse due to heavy rains, block drains, and laying pipe that was carried out in 2019. So in mid-December 2019, Prime Minister Mayor Motley, other government representatives and engineers visited the community and declared that work would begin the same month and lasted to about March 2020. Uh, and outspoken resident Jefferson Thompson, <laughs> Jeff, told Barbara today that while well, he was grateful the water situation improved, the road is still deplorable. And Jeff is saying that while well, he commended the officials for the half work, work, half thing that work that they did so far, that the road still needed to be finished. <laughs> and he said, it is not a road you can fix easily. But the time span in which the Prime Minister had given the road should have been completed by now. It is atrocious, said Jefferson Trotman. He said that he understands that it's COVID, but it was budgeted, so the money should have been there to complete the road. So if the road had been completed in the time span she had given, meaning the Prime Minister, we would have run into COVID, he said, pointing out that a part of the delay may have been caused by a lack of some equipment. <clears throat> that is Jefferson Trump must be king. Stressing that he understood that it was not an easy fix now that the country is under severe economic stress from the effects of the pandemic. And uh, he said the country still has to function, so we have to balance both. And he pointed out because of the conditions of the road, people still had to be changing various parts on their vehicles due to damage. And he said that we understand COVID has come and the government of Barbados has wider worlds and the wider world is under economic constraints. But at the same time, whatever is possible at this time, we will be grateful if the road is completed. Right? So so that is resident Jeff Thompson. When you come down to the end of this article, no. Right? Because the other people in there were speaking about water and water trucks. Valerie Gittings, who owns a house in the neighborhood, said, I return home every year for a levy vacation, told Barbados today that she was surprised the road condition was, and said that I believe it should have been fixed already. It is about time. When we stopped in the middle of the hill, where they paved, where they stopped paving the road, we asked one of the older gentlemen living there what was happening mm -hmm. with the road. He said the road is good, the road is fine. They paved the whole road from top to bottom. <laughs> I was like, what? Who was that? Yeah, they paved the whole road. I was like, when last you left home, I went down this hill. He said, Well, I ain't right now here in so much years. I can't tell you. I said, Well, I can tell you stand right now. This road ain't gone past right around that corner that you can see. It started right there. If you bend your head far enough, you can see the end of the road right here. So for about a kilometer and more long stretching going all down to the bottom of this road, in do, in touch. <laughs> right? But still the money was allocated and the resident said Jefferson Chopman said it rightfully that the money was allocated in the budget. And if they had done the road within the three months span as the Prime Minister promised, COVID would have never impacted them. And I checked the estimates of Barbados. And this year alone. Mm -hmm. The government has a head called road rehabilitation, and yeah. they have twenty-seven million dollars under the CAF. It says road rehabilitation, CAF, Latin American Development Bank. 
27 million in the estimates. And I can bet you none in the finished spot house. And it shouldn't be there because we don't have two loans already. So the two loans should have fixed spot house world already. So we need some transparency and accountability about mm -hmm. the funds that was received for spot house where the road is not finished. And whose decision was it to go ahead and build a road knowing full well that the road ain't got no dreams? Yeah, you know, this is it's a, this is really, you know, someone said earlier tonight as well that um, we are, um, you know, that people on here gaslighting and why are we, you know, no, what, what this is, is transparency and accountability. As citizens, we have a right to know. We have a right to ask questions. Very, very important. And if you, people would remember, Mr. Franklin, we started asking those questions on this show. And, and, and before we had a leader of the opposition who was able to take this kind of thing, Imar, into the, house, the, um, the, the walls of parliament so that it could be asked on those floors. So what, what is happening here is so very important that every single citizen begin to do this kind of work. Don't leave it up to Kimar to do. Don't leave it up to Caswell to do. Don't leave it up to Dr. Ferdinand to do. Everybody needs to get involved. And I'm telling you, if we all get involved, you would see how that 29 of them running and working and sweating because your vote matters. Your vote matters. And I just want to commend Kimar for doing this. But Kimar is really modeling to all of us what we need to do. You know, Mr. Franklin, I think I think that that is so um, important and we commend Kimar for what he's done. You see, um, this is not the first time that Kimar raised this, you know? And if, well, if they had any shame, they would have at least gone out there and fixed the problem or appear to be fixing it, you know? But God knows the money might be gone. And that is why they just at uh, but the your video and uh, video came out suggest to me that they took some things just throw it on the road. They, it, it didn't um at one section it looked it didn't look like it was paved properly, it wasn't rolled in or anything like that. It just looked like the fellas couldn't be bothered. Like the machinery that do the paving around the diesel or something. So it, it looked it looked atrocious. Because the night when you murder, the night when you when you raise it. Yes. Um, I um some person Came on and they was explaining to me on my phone. He sent a message to me. I was relaying it to the thing that, the, that he, what Kimar was saying is absolutely true. That the water coming through your house. And 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 um, where is the MP? Where is? But they can't be Prime Minister. She's overseas. I understand. And but she doesn't live here, so I probably wouldn't bother her. But the people of Saint John have to come out and demonstrate let the people see that they are not being properly represented at any level that's the only way it will work because they want Kimar to do it for them um well like I suggested them and I'm not trying to canvas for Kimar I'm just saying well if they want Kimar to be the president for them make him the MP that, that, that would that would be my solution because for sure they, they will get what they need done because he's going they know he's going to um he's going to make sure that everybody knows what's going on and uh, you know I'm I'm yes I want the road I want nice roads for the people to walk on Kimar um but I think what is most important for me is that water um you know Mr Franklin that's flooding the people's homes you know what it is when your 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 water is in your house when the rain when when you see that rain set up, Mr. Franklin. You know we we all didn't grow up. You know we grew up. I grew up uh, very poor, and sometimes when the rain set up, you're thinking, Oh Lord, the bed going wet now. This going to happen now. Water going to come in. You understand how what it is when you save up your money, you get this stuff at courts, and you have the thing in the house, and then the water comes in, Mr. Franklin. Yep, what yep. are the things that you still have to pay for? And that's better, what poor people have to deal with in this country. You better not have carpet. Because if you got carpet, you're going to smell something like a dead rat. After, And you've got to take the carpet out. And 
cap it. I got rid of that. Don't come back in any hurry. Well, it it's, it's depending break. depending on, on what you have set the carpet on as well. You might have to pull out all the underlay as well, all the under padding of the carpet. Mm. Generally, when you lay down carpet, you lay down an under padding. Um, most of the time you do that. Some people may just put it straight down on tiles or whatever, but most of the time, if you if you want it done properly, you put it down on, on the paddock. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that, that is important. And as somebody says, the rainy season is coming soon. And those people in um, St. John, we are speaking about the people. We could talk about roads. Yes, it's good to have good roads to drive on so your cars, then, you know, you, you don't have to keep, um, you know, replacing your tires and the mashes you break, uh, break up the car etc but let's also think about the people the individuals who live there and 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 really call on the, the it, this is santia bradshaw um isn't this under her ministry road works um Kimar? Yeah, yes yes yeah this is santia bradshaw again and and so what what the question is um, what is where? Where is the money that was was a, a, allotted? Um, two well, sets of money allotted to um, to this road. Where is the rest of the road, and where is the drainage? Well, if the people of St. John are pot, and potholes want the road fixed, they might have to go and collect some seven thousand five hundred dollars um, things to help to the road. You know, because that <laughs> might, that might help. You know, I I don't know. You know, that you gotta get a fund. So I suggest. Yeah. Contributions are at seven thousand five hundred dollars. That's only my suggestion. You can That's put how, more. How it, how it would work? <laughs> but you, you know, Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, I, I think what happens a lot of times, Kimar, and you alluded to it, Kimar, in in your brilliant presentation, is about that elderly man who did not get out of his house to walk down, you know, to to check. Um, and a lot of times in these areas in in Jamaica, we call them country areas, Mr. Franklin. Um, you know, we somehow we feel like those people, you know, they if they live in back a bush, you know, and you can do anything that you want to do with them. And so the people of St. John, if you're listening to me, you need to rise up. Here is Kimar speaking out against that. You need to rise up, rise up and stand up strong and let them know that this rainy season is a season is coming, and no, you're not going to have this water coming in your house after. They got all of this money already that we will still have to go and pay and, and, and pay back from our taxes. Right? Call call the your call your representative right to um Santia Bradshaw and and, 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 and um, register these the, the, the complaint. Yeah, and because they're gonna say he are making trouble, making trouble when the people almost drown inside of the house and the furniture wash away. Well, you see, that's because we continue to take these issues, um, Marcia, as political and politics and not what is in the interest of the citizens of the country. It doesn't matter whether it's DLP or BLP. If something should be done, do it. And I stand by what I say. We pay you to do it. It's your job. Don't expect accolades and celebration for it. If you're not doing your job, then you should be fired. And clearly for what uh, Kimar has shared tonight, I listen carefully the amount of funding that has been borrowed, the promises that have been made. I, I am living in, in St. George. I'm not necessarily going to say where, but they've just paved the road beautifully, uh, Marcia, from mm. all the way up above me, all the way beautifully, all the way down to the roundabout by Lower State, beautifully, all across Lower State to the highway, beautifully. What happened with pot, uh, a, a pot hole? Yeah. Well, I didn't mean pot hole, you know. <laughs> there are the pot holes, sorry. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And um, somebody, Pathetic. somebody here is saying, and this is this is a thing that we need to um, continue to use this show, um, Kimar, to advocate for those persons who might not feel like they might not have a strong voice. And and it's that little old man who came out and said, "Oh, but the road is the road is already done, and it's it's you know he he doesn't know he probably can't walk up the road and the, you know down the hill and come back up, you know. So we must continue to advocate for the for for, for people like yes. him. And yes. and um, yes. there's someone wrote here. This is another thing that is happening there in Saint John that a lot of those people 
no buses in this day and age. It's progressive country, Mr. Franklin. This country that is so progressive that that we are going to take up, um, you know, to build some kind of monument that is rusting the rain coming and rusting that monument who look as ugly as, as, as ever. And, and these people are, these people have no buses. There are no buses. So I want to know those new buses that they're getting from China. Well, the people um, in, in Pot House, it's Pot Hall, Pot House. Pot, um, pot House, but I call it Pot Hall. <laughs> pot House. If those, the, the people who are there, are, are, we, are they going to get buses that will go into these into those kinds of communities? Or you think that they live in back of bush and they should walk? You know, Bus these are it. some of the things that 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 we have to 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 uh, make known to, known to everybody. Bus is not designed to handle those kind of roads, uh, Marcia. Most of those buses are. You know the roads that China has some beautiful roads. You know, China has some lovely highways, and and a lot of the. I learned a long time ago, that, uh, the the potholes and 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 whatnot in this country affect the computerization of vehicles. I learned that a long time ago. You don't you don't take computerization systems and drop them all the place and lick them up. But you do that, you you are going to have malfunctions, etc. No wonder uh, Caswell referred to earlier tonight to a bus that would not stop because the braking system is electronically controlled and probably as a result of the potholes, the system has malfunctioned, uh, so the bus could not stop. So I I don't know that they they would or should put those buses down in an area that is like that maybe you should just get the old uh, you know uh, analog vehicles and do that yeah and someone here saying um no buses no water no, water. no road and then the water that that, that 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 is that is there is not harnessed properly so the people can't use the water in fact in the, the water now become become a nuisance and a weapon to the people in the community and um that community has been there for so many years with all these different um you know uh uh political leaders and mps and different different uh, political parties and the people are still suffering in that community and i tell you that i really believe it's because they do not put any value on the people that live in that community i, I remember here in where i live here um they had the, they were the same infra was fixing this road and they were they were they were wetting up uh, in a certain area but on the road that is leading to Sam Lords here, they, they would not wet the road because they felt there's a lot of older people that live on this road, they're not going to complain. And, and I believe that that, that that might be part of what is what is happening. And so we have to continue to advocate. I, and, and, you know, so I we went and got signatures, went on brass stacks, whatever. And by the, I tell you, in days, the water trucks were down here wetting this road and taking care of the people in the community, fixing back our, um, the, the people's um, sidewalk that they broke down. The, the, the elderly people crying, they can't get in their home. They thought that nobody would come and help them. But so, so this advocacy is, is so important um, for people who do not believe that they do not have a voice. Himar, you, were, you have something you wanted to share? Yeah, I just want to show my screen to show you. Right. This is Charles Griffith speaking about laws from the Chinese government to fix the Scotland district. Right. And he said Pothole should have been there and Dramada from Bath should have been there. But all these words that he calling it, it weren't fictional. I remember all of these were words occurred on the Santia Bradshaw, the Minister of Transport and Works. Right. And let's not forget that in St. Andrew, which is part of the Scotland district, that the Chinese called Black Company actually abandoned some of the real works that was going on down there. I, I don't know if you guys saw that in the media, but it was abandoned. So here you have it, right? That all of this, and I they will pass a further now with, with the statement he made before that we need to understand the amount of money that was borrowed in this country to fix roads. Mm -hmm. Right, because here you have it allegedly that a minister receiving an advantage or bribes or whatever you want to call it as a minister of transport and works. Right, I still you have all of this money. Marcia, you know that this 
the, the Chinese lent Barbados over four hundred million dollars in loans just to build roads in the Scotland district. Yep. Yep. Wow. And that had nothing to do with the two hundred and something million dollars that the, the I think the IADB lent to Barbados when the administration first started to assist with road rehabilitation in Barbados. We need an accounting of that. We need we need accounting of that, and that's under Santia Bradshaw's um, um, office again. That that's her area, um, and so we need a proper proper accounting. I don't I don't understand um, what 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 where, what where that money has gone. And people would tell me, Kimar, even work, but the, you know, people would say what they don't understand. They would turn up, and there is no work. They just sitting down looking. Which makes me wonder what is really going on, Mr. Franklin? I will tell you, because I have had to ask that of some of my members who would uh, suggest to me that um, you will, they will give you some of the equipment and materials to build the road, but not enough. Like, okay. for instance, you want to build curbs. They give you grit and um, sand but no cement. So you can't, you can't, so you have to sit on the cement to come. And they don't bring the cement. And then they will say, oh, the MTW people are not working, so we can get the emperor. They are actually putting MTW people out of work deliberately so they can give contracts to their friends. All right? MTW people are the experts on road building in Barbados. They have been, they, they are the people doing it. Infra started to build roads recently and they're not building good quality roads. Mm. But the problem is somebody said they can give them some experience. And the experience is that, is that the hands of the MTW staff who go and who work in the depots and have to go and sit down because the government gives them some of the materials to do the work. And then you will hear all oh, the people are just sitting down for weeks and they've been doing anything. But you can't do anything if you ain't got the material. You know, you know, you, you can't make um straw bricks without straw. They may gain on the straw. That is the problem. So when you see MTW people, for God's sake, don't just criticize them and curse them and think they can't do any better. They are they are they are being eased out of work. I'll give you some more exam another example. MTW people are supposed to clean the streets. All right, but what did this government do? This government started a program and had the empty W people sitting down while you have this program giving people jobs and ash program and, mm -hmm. and cleaning the streets and cutting down bush and all kinds of stuff. Those people who you see next to the road that swing cutlasses close to each other because there's so many of them. And they don't give themselves space. I, I'm surprised that some no major incident happened with somebody chopping somebody head because they stand too close to each other with, with, with swords. But that's MTW's job. That already has, you see, the, the government has a way of creating alternate programs, alternate bodies like they did with the, the GIS 2. I call it, they call it the. Um, What they call it, car the first um, department or, or something like that. I can't remember the, the um, whatever you call it these days now. But that was doing exactly what um, um, JS was in, was set up to do back in the 50s. All right. But then <laughs> if they're doing it, so now I understand they want to rationalize it too. You don't need rationalization. You need to get rid of the people you put in there that weren't supposed to be there in the first place. Uh -huh. You know, you bring your yard folks and you put them in jobs. And then you're going to displace people in a rationalization because you've got two departments essentially doing the same thing. So you're going to rationalize. So what you're going to do, you're going to get rid of um, some of the people from the GIS. That's the plan. That's the next plan. Because you yeah. you are you 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 had in, you you had enough people at yeah. GIS to do the work. But then you bring other people to do the work. But now you've got too many people doing the work, so you've got to get rid of some. So not only some you can get rid of, the people who are already there and doing a good job. I tell you. And that, that is the problem. But, yeah. you know, we're all in this together this year. Um, 
I, I did some research earlier that was going through it because right, you know, I don't it's believe the them. It's almost 10, just so, just yeah, so you just know. Just let me finish that. That yeah. was a statement made by um, David Cameron in 2012. And it didn't Motley, you know? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I got it here, right here, queued up like a play for you. I got David Cameron's speech um, to the Conservative Party and in 2012. He says we are in this together. And Molly borrowed that and come here. She okay. borrowed the um the um they call that plagiarism. Yeah, you know, she also borrowed the one for MSNBC. <laughs> you know, Mama Marcia. Yeah, it's uh, right. Yeah. You met the slogan. What was that slogan again? Um I can't um, remember. Well, she, uh, you know, but and then the little big one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. But listen, listen, uh, you know, this, again, I, I came on late, I, did, I didn't catch everything, but I'm just feeling just so energized and ready to go to war for the people in St. John, um, you know, as a, as, a, as a country girl myself, I'm ready to go to war for them, beautiful people, beautiful spirit, I remember when we were in St. John doing, um, we did the motorcade, and those people are so kind, you know, it's just a different feeling, you know, um, down there in St. John and, 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 you know, no water, no proper running water, buses, you know, and now this issue, the drainage, the washing out the people of the house. I mean, it, it's, it's really, really, um, really sad. Um, and I say to the people of um, St. John, you are part of Barbados, you know, your citizens stand up and we're going to stand um, with you. I just want to say in closing that tomorrow, marks one year uh there has been an indian student um in barbados who um died and the 16th was last year april 16 2023 that those parents in india lost that young man and um he was a student here at the um, biu bridgestone in um, international university and i'm going to on wednesday um, in a tribute to that young man, we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about the Indian universities that are in um, not just Barbados, but the region and in, in Canada and the U.S. And just some of what is happening to a lot of these students. And for us to take a, 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 a greater look at, at the universities here in Barbados that um, a lot of these students, they, they travel from, you know, different countries and they, they get here. And um, only God knows what happens to a lot of them. And so we're going to look at that on, on Wednesday, among the other things. But I just want to remember that young man um, as, as we, as we um, do our show on the 17th, passed on the 16th. Yes. Um, uh, any final words there, um, Kimar? Yes, um, the Ministry of Transport and Works. This is one of those ministries, just like the Ministry of Housing, that had about four or five ministers. You had William Duguid as mm. a substantive minister. I don't know if Mr. Duguid is in everything bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dubai. <laughs> Dubai. 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 Oh, I thought he said Dubai. Okay, <laughs> okay, it's sorry. It's too bad, and that's what we said. But you know, somebody said me, stop calling the people names. But you know, I can't that one funny to me. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> he and Peter Phillips, who was the representative for St. Lucie, they were senior minister, junior minister. Then it was given over to Ian Gooden Edgel. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember if he had a junior minister. Then it was given over now to Santia Bradshaw. Right, so that is that is four people I count I counted in all, and I don't I can't remember if Good Edge had, uh, I think he had um, a lot of Santi that had a parliamentary secretary, um, Dr. Romel Springer. Right, so that so that so those were three people, in in the, so just like housing. I suspect. I just hope this is not another whole instance. Oh God! Project, <laughs> but my uh, what was Spider-Man says? My spidey senses are saying that 
it could just be another ministry of housing hope project right mm. but the substantive point here is as you said marcia the people at Port house they ensure that they're not flooded out and to get an account for those loans marcia because how is that if chinese give you 400 million dollars in loans to rebuild the scotland district and then the prime minister herself saying that she got loans specifically from CAF and the latin american development bank and then there's 27 million dollars accounting for the estimates of barbados from CAF, the same bank and none for pot house in st john hmm. so somebody and I, not just anybody but the, but she's not here so i don't know if she will be able to respond but she could do like what she did the last time and say somebody maybe not kurt but somebody else <laughs> say somebody to explain to us why she was saying there you no know, that they ain't gonna go ahead and do it without the drainage but they're, they're right ahead anyway and put down a half road without drainage right got the people down the hill scrambling the money is gone marcia that was right. allocated for the road and the road is not there right so my heart aches for these people and my heart aches even further for the amount of financial financial wastage in terms of our monies and the fact that we're getting money and loans for the government to be able to do things even building these chinese houses and and what houses and i look at where the money is going wasting we're not seeing the results we're not seeing the produce the production on the other hand on the other hand for the amount of money we have but what we're getting is more and more corruption but that is yeah. all i have to say tonight thank you yes um thank you so much um and um dr ferdinand and we give um mr um our general the last words well just a couple of quick comments um just to quickly refer back to the matter to do with Kensington Oval, I hadn't seen the article in the Barbados today in which the Prime Minister indicated that the loan was taken at 7%. Um, Kimar, I think you could you could uh, substantiate for me um, the interest rate on loans from the International Monetary Fund. Is that not around 2%? It was between 1% to 2%, but uh, as Kazwa said earlier, the labor rate would have caused a jump in all of the interest rates that we have so so they're variable no variable no we don't know what they went up to so therefore mm -hmm. we don't know how much uh interest cost has gone up through the last year right thank you um so i i you know i had indicated i hadn't seen anything to do with the interest rate so i just wanted to clarify that i hadn't seen the article in the barbados today i, I was looking at the article i think from the nation april the 14th um, and incidentally uh just to make mention um, of the fact that the uh, Cybercrime Committee, um, uh, Marcia, mm -hmm. was formed on the 8th of April, but the PR release was the 12th. So we've already, already lost four days in submissions to them from the time the committee was formed to the time the public relations mm -hmm. Uh, information was given four days is a lot of time yeah. for people to, to have to submit so i just wanted to mention those two things and to to say what a what a, a honor it has been for me to to hold the fort for you over the last uh few days um i'm very grateful for the opportunity to do so and i've enjoyed so much sharing the time with caswell and kimar and maxine and rose and had tremendous tremendous time and of course so that I don't take any more lashes, uh, uh, Caswell. Uh, it's really good to see Greta Calendar and Diane Seeley <laughs> and, you know, all of these persons that joined uh, tonight with 1776 Freedom and Peter King. You know, all of you, I wish I could call all your names, but there, there are a lot of people on that list. I don't know how Marcia gets it done, boy, but I tell you. Yours is a hard act to follow, <laughs> Marcia, when it comes to that. And I think you're the only person that can nail that down. But thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to serve you in this way and to serve the loyal opposition. Wish you all a great night. God bless you. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Ferdinand, um, for 
um, in, in the church world, we say standing in the gap. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yes, yes, and, yes. And, yes. and doing it so ably. Thank you so much. Thank you so um, much. God uh, bless you. Mr. Franklin, over to you, General. We haven't um, called you General in a long time. General. Yeah, yeah um, Freddie, um, you did do a good job. Um, and you would, you would place second to Marcia, of course. And it is not a close second either, but it will still be second. Well, and well at, least, <laughs> at least you remember that you remember that one where the person said that they came third when the truth and in fact there were only three people in the race. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, oh. you, you guys are so yeah. great. I love I love being here with you, you know. And that's why I make it my business, even if I go I'll go eat then I know at ten o'clock, you know. <laughs> um me too. I don't want to take a lot of time this evening to say goodbye, goodbye. However, there's one thing I want to raise, and I want to put this in the um to the government to, to listen to. Many years ago, some people thought that I would make a good fraud investigator, and they sent me overseas to investigate, to learn how to investigate fraud. I pick up a lot, but one of the first things they taught us was that um if you have a person in the department, especially dealing with money, and he would not go on vacation, check him out. Nine chances out of ten, he's a thief. We have people in government departments today at the head. One head of department in Barbados that I know of has not taken vacation in three years. <sighs> Nobody loves their job that much. You know, you all got something to do. You all got something to do around the house. And if you find, if the ministers find that they have heads of department that are not taking vacation, they should require them to take vacation. So, Mr. Abrams, listen to me and do what you have to do. I say no more. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Franklin. Mm. I will see um, everybody tomorrow. Thank you for a great, a great panel. Thank you to Dave, who has been... Um, you know, making sure that we can see all of the, the different slides and videos, etc. And thank you for everybody who um, came on tonight. All the names. I won't try to call the, all the names now. <laughs> I'll do that on Wednesday, God willing, when we, yeah. when we join. And as I said, um, we're going to just spend a little time talking about um, the Bridgestone International University and um, the Indian students who are here among us in Barbados. Thank you all so very much once again. Have a good night. But you know we have to play. I don't know. Do we have the video ready to go? We have to play that video. I, 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 I don't have it, but Dave has always had it for the end. <laughs> yeah, Dave has I'm always had it for the um, end. If, if, are we going to get this tonight? No? Okay. Let's and, try and we, we, we do let's want to give him the kudos now he can hear us because he wasn't on at the time when we were giving him all the kudos. But yeah, Dave, thank no you so much. Yeah, thank I you can, so much. I Great job. Yeah, Great I job. The people, I, the, the, the people owe the weeks a great debt of gratitude oh, yeah, to people in this do. country. Really, trust really, me. Really. You know, like, I don't really. think I, I, they are a great team. That maths nor English, 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 English. Pretending to be good. Hey, pretending to be good, good, good. Just pretending to be good. Hey, pretending to be good, good. I just pretending to care about people. 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 Pretending. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. And I'm pretending. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. I'm pretending to be good. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. <laughs> Love it. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. God bless. They're Good pretending night. to care about the people in St. John. That's what they're doing, is a pretense. Good night. <laughs>